thing is launched live, baby. On deck! Loyal forever. We're trying to make the playoffs this year, win a playoff game for the first time in a while. And now... The Austin High Maroon On Deck Show. That's a run, run, run. Get on, run, 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 run. It's our hardest and not leave any regrets when the final game is over. Get out on the field. Bring the team together so we can get more wins. Players, my teammates, we developed a really good relationship over the season. Brought to you by Plains Capital. Strong roots for a strong future. Financial products and services tailored to your needs. 8118 Dental Professionals. Dental care focused on whole body wellness. Sportsman's Barbershop. A friendly neighborhood barbershop. Horizon Bank. Since 1905, Horizon has been proud to work with local businesses across Central Texas and beyond. Hit Forth. At Hit Forth, we're hardcore about data-driven player development. By Tate Property. Exceptional homes. Exceptional service. Perrytown Pharmacy. Innovative care. Timeless service. Nance Orthodontics. Seamless, state-of-the-art orthodontic treatment focused on you. And now to the Maroon Broadcast booth. Here's Josh Willard and James Scott. And welcome here to the to the Burger Ballpark here with uh, Papa Scott and the Willard of Oz. Uh, it's been a long time since uh, being back on the mic with, with my broadcast partner and man, uh, what a season to get hyped for Coach A, his first offseason with the boys. Um, just a lot, you know, looking forward to coming into this year. 100%. This team here is far more athletic. They're stronger. They're in better shape than the team last year. I really look forward to watching this team and see how they progress over the next 30-plus games. Absolutely. And just again, thank you so much to everybody listening on the YouTube channel. Make sure you go ahead and give a like and subscribe and unsubscribe, resubscribe. You know the drill. Uh, but again, just, uh, you know, a lot that this team went through last year uh, with the coaching change and then, you know, couldn't necessarily finish some games. So hopefully that's what, you know, they've worked on the offseason, conditioned um, and gotten themselves ready for, again, a very competitive district, but one that they were in every single ball game. hundred percent. So you hit the nail on the head. We are far deeper than we were last year. So we have 18 players suited up. At no point last year do I think we ever had 18 players. And just think, those of you who are with us last year, how many games we were one hit or one pitcher shy of getting out and getting more wins. I swear, we were probably a pitcher and a batter away from being a 500 team last year. And it, there was a lot of excitement, a lot of good things and positives that the boys did, but something to look for is just you know okay. some more guys stepping up in the bullpen um, and, and just seeing a lot more from that from that end. But again, a lot of excitement around this team, and we're excited that you're here with us tonight as we kick off district against the Anderson Trojans. That's one of the things about the crazy uh, district schedule. We have nine in our district, so with us being off on spring break plus having the nine that kind of makes the schedule a little interesting so we begin the season with anderson and we end the regular season with anderson as well so it'd be a great game between two great clubs so we should get ready and get going it's an exciting time to be here tonight for sure as we kick things off a beautiful austin night um and so we definitely we have starting lineups or we're going to do starting lineups when we get back why don't we go ahead and cut it over to commercial and thank our sponsors that's right thank you so much we'll pay rent we'll be right back with more austin high baseball here on the vibe live network one that's tapered or blocked clipped or trimmed just the way you like it come let the licensed barbers at the sportsman's barbershop take care of you the sportsman's barbershop is a friendly no frills neighborhood barbershop located in austin's brikerwood area our barbers specialize in traditional haircuts for men and boys along with beard trims and straight razor shaves the trophies and mounts donated by customers that line the barbershop walls serve as testaments to over 60 years of serving austin give the guys a call 512-459-9525 to schedule your appointment today or look us up online at sportsmansbarbershop.com the sportsman's barbershop an austin institution back here on the maroon on deck show with coach arianis coach what a difference a year makes man 12 months ago you were coaching freshmen 
You got the interim job and got the full-time job now. What kind of changes do you feel has happened with you? Um, a lot of things, I'll be honest. Um, personal growth. Uh, I feel like things are moving a lot faster now. Now that I'm in control, I can. Uh, I really need to sit down and kind of look at us as, as a team and, and see what we got. I, I feel like we got more depth in the team. Um, we're faster, we're stronger, we're more composed. Um, a lot of changes. I mean, I could stay here and, and talk for a few minutes, but we have grown a lot. You talked about stronger and faster. What kind of things have you implemented to help us kind of reach our full potential? Yeah, um, it all started with our um, summer open workouts, kind of having the same idea going into fall um, with our off-season program, weightlifting. Uh, we stayed playing ball, which was uh, great for us because I feel like we've never had fall ball. Um, we stayed playing baseball, started, kept throwing, um, had one mindset and, and worked through it. Uh, I think the weight room helped us out a lot, not just as a physical side, but the camaraderie is better um, and the program is just better itself. You mentioned the team is deeper this year. Where do you think the team uh, has increased its depth versus last year at the most? I think I'll, I'll talk about position wise a little bit. I feel like our outfield we have, we can move around dudes um, who can really fly around and catch balls. Um, our middle infield looks a, a lot more composed. Corners as well. We have a lot of returners, which is great. Um, so we, we have experience. We have uh, older kids who are have matured. Um, yeah, so as far as position wise, I think we're, we're pretty deep in that. How about the pitchers? Like we're we're filming this the day before the season starts. Uh, we have a game uh, tomorrow, obviously. How f comfortable and how far are you willing to let the the pitchers go at this time in the season? Uh, this time's a little weird because we have a district game, tournament, district game, tournament, district, and then tournament. So a little a little tricky, but um, I'm looking to use all my guys to get that win. Um, if I feel like a guy's in trouble, pull him out, get the next guy up. Um, but again, I do want to let him compete to to a certain extent. Um, again, it's very tricky. We have district tomorrow and then tournament on the weekend, which is we're going to need a lot of arms, but I'm going to let, let our guys compete and go from there. Yeah, we have a lot of baseball in the next three weeks, man. It's almost like a major league right. schedule, right? right. So, anyway, thank you very much for your time today. Good luck this season. Thank you for being part of the Maroon on Deck show. Thank you. We're very excited. Uh, it's here. It's finally here. I feel like we've been talking about it for more than a year, but it's finally here. I think these kids deserve to compete their butts off, and, and we're very excited. Thank you. All right. We'll be right back on the Maroon on Deck show after these words. Austin High School baseball team and enjoy the spring season with ease thanks to Terrytown Pharmacy. We're not just a pharmacy, we are a neighborhood health hub offering prescription services, immunizations, home delivery, and a charming selection of gifts for any occasion. Whether you're celebrating a win or supporting a player, find the perfect gift and keep your health in check at Terrytown Pharmacy. Let's celebrate health, wellness, and community spirit together. Welcome back to the Maroon on Deck show. I'm here with our esteemed principal, Dr. Bedford. Dr. B, how you doing? Doing well. How are you? Doing great. Thank you very much for your time today. A lot of things going on in Austin High always, but especially this semester. What's a couple of things that stick out most in your mind? Well, the big thing that we have going on right now is Camp Global. Uh, our Academy for Global Studies will be doing a hunger and poverty, poverty simulation uh, there in Heifer. Um, it's something that we do every year that we're real excited about. Um, we also have some events coming up for our uh, Academy for Design and Technology and our Academy for Science and Innov Innovation. They'll be taking a STEM trip to, to London here in the near future. Um, and then our Academy for Classical Studies will be taking a grade learning expedition to Italy. So once again, we're kind of hitting the ground running here. We, we love to extend the classroom. Uh, we think learning is uh, better done when students are allowed the opportunity to be hands-on with it, um, which explains a lot of our travel opportunities. Yeah, absolutely. So we believe, obviously, in the, the full student, both the 
academic side and then the athletic side from the athletic side big news with uil uh, realignment um give us come uh, some of your thoughts on what's happened uh there and the district's changing a little bit but but not as much as we might have thought well absolutely before i get into this i, I want to give a shout out to uh coach richardson our uh girls basketball coach um they uh, uh made the playoffs this year um, it was it was an awesome season, and they really overcame some obstacles uh, in order to do that. So I'm really proud of them, him and those girls. Um, UIL, what what more can you you say? Uh, every two years, uh, well, first off, it's a govern governing body um, that sort of uh, sets the rules and regulations regarding not just athletics but academics and, and music with fine arts. Um, every two years, they do a UIL realignment, which is what we are experiencing now. Um, it's based on your real-time enrollment at that particular snapshot, not necessarily the enrollment taken at the beginning of the year. Um, that snapshot enrollment, which is in this year, it's in October, some years it varies. Um, that snapshot enrollment is based on a moving target number um, that determines whether or not a school falls into a 6A class classification, a 5A classification. 4A classification, et cetera. Um, so that, that's, that's, that's what we just experienced. Uh, obviously, we all know the results of that realignment. We will be in, in 6A, um, but we did lose a team out of that uh, grouping. Um, Anderson did drop down, um, and, and uh, they got you know dropped into um, a pretty challenging situation as well. So um, we understand what we have in front of us. Um, and our kids are up for the challenge. Yeah, 100%. Now, we were, what, like 30 kids or something away from 5A, something uh, like that? Under 30 kids away from 5A. Um, it, it's something that we uh, we looked at, we prepared for, but we also uh, make sure that, you know, we, we prepare uh, for the worst and hope for the best. And in this situation, we were prepared for either outcome. Sure, sure. Now, outside of athletics, is there any other – uh, competitive advantage uh, or any any other area that it might impact band or theater or debate or anything like that well it, it impacts everything um, that's involved in UIL and and for some it'll have a positive for some it'll have a negative it just dep depends on where you where you sit um, girls athletics is typically a little different than boys um, you know so in terms of some of your bigger, more powerhouse uh, uh, schools. Um, so that that's a little bit different. Um, the only thing it affects outside of UIL is, is staffing. It does affect your staffing um, because typically if you move up, for example, that just that means that you've gained more students. If you move down, less students and your staffing formulas work out uh, to determine how much you get based on those numbers. Yeah, fantastic. You know, I always tell kids if your dream is to play next level you might as well come to this district because it's a tough district and you know i can speak from experience the very first time i walked out on college field and there were 60 other players that were just as good as me it was a little humbling right if you have an experience in 26 6a like our baseball team here you're facing elite guys all the time it's it's a dog fight so I'm, I'm personally not disappointed we're in 6a we did see the play-in game last year at burger and you know, there's definitely a huge talent level, a talent difference between 5A and 6A. Right, and, and, and I, I really wish um, there was more discussion about that, uh, the level that we compete at night in and night out, um, the, the courage and the grit that our kids leave out on the field every day. They're not just playing against uh, some six-man football team. They're playing against Westlake, Lake Travis, Dripping Springs. These are some of the best programs in the state and we're having an opportunity to showcase who we are and and ultimately um we'll be leading that pack i believe absolutely now what about for you being a principal of a 6a school is that more prestige than a 5a school or is there any like do you get extra bonus or anything like because you're a 6a school and you're not a 5a school or is it the same job it's, it's the same job um it's the same grind um and, and we, we love it 
you know, uh, whether it was a 6A or a 1A uh, school. Um, I, I'll be honest, when I was a principal of a, of a 4A campus, there was probably uh, more prestige in that position because it was a one high school town. So as, as the principal, I was the principal, I was the mayor, I was the governor, I was everything. So, um, uh, so no, there's, there's no difference uh, uh, based on enrollment. There's no increase in, in pay. It's just, you know, we do this because we, we love it and kids show up on our doorstep and, and we care for them just like we care for any other kid. Sure. What about the coaches? Any extra incentive for Coach Riley or Coach Aaron Nihilus or anything no, like that? No, they get they get no extra incentives. Um, they, you know, they just, um, they're charged with coaching their tails off. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. All right, switching gears a little bit, think back to your days in high school. What are a couple of things that you remember from high school that, you know, really impacted you and then did you bring any of that here to Austin High? You know, I, I remember that I wasn't I wasn't a bad student, but I, I wasn't the Val or Sal either. Uh, I was I was a middle of the road kid. Um, thankful that some of my football coaches and basketball coaches uh, really um, supported me. Um, you know, pushed me through school, uh, made sure that when I didn't have um, that I had. I was from a single parent household. Um, so a lot of those coaches really filled that role that was that was left there. Um, so there's, you know, there's a bunch of coaches that not just taught me, you know, geography and, and math and, and, and football and all this. They also taught me how to be an adult, how to be a professional, uh, how to carry myself, how to look people in the eye and shake them in the hand. Um, you know, so that's, um, you know, that's something that that I learned from Coach Aldridge, um, for instance, who was my defensive line coach, Coach Escamilla, who was the assistant defensive line coach, um, you know, all, all of our position coaches, um, and then our, our head coach, Coach Brister, who taught us that uh, being a better man was more important than being right. And that stuck with me. Man, how true is that? How true is that? Well, we couldn't have a better man leading Austin High than you. So thank you very much for your time. You've been very generous with your time. And always great to talk to you. Wonderful. And we'll be back on the Maroon On Deck Show right after these messages. Cheer on your Austin High School baseball team and enjoy the spring season with ease thanks to Terrytown Pharmacy. We're not just a pharmacy, we are a neighborhood health hub offering prescription services, immunizations, home delivery, and a charming selection of gifts for any occasion. Whether you're celebrating a win or supporting a player, find the perfect gift and keep your health in check at Terrytown Pharmacy. Let's celebrate health, wellness, and community spirit together. Do you need a haircut? A real haircut? One that's tapered or blocked, clipped or trimmed just the way you like it? Come let the licensed barbers at the Sportsman's Barbershop take care of you. The Sportsman's Barbershop is a friendly, no-frills neighborhood barbershop located in Austin's Brikerwood area. Our barbers specialize in traditional haircuts for men and boys, along with beard trims and straight razor shaves. The trophies and mounts donated by customers that line the barbershop walls serve as testaments to over 60 years of serving Austin. Give the guys a call, 512-459-9525 to schedule your appointment today or look us up online at sportsmansbarbershop.com. The Sportsman's Barbershop, an Austin institution. We're back on the Maroon On Deck show with tonight's starting pitcher, Jake Beck, some guy I've known since he's about in the first grade. Jake, congratulations on the start tonight. How far do you think you could actually go, this being the 19th, 20th of February? Uh, right now, I'd probably say four to five innings of pretty solid uh, consistency. I mean, once I get to a certain amount of pitches, my arm will start to drag a little bit, but should be a solid four to five of pretty hot stuff. And so we'll go from there. Very good. So a lot of change for you in the last year. Uh, you made varsity last year. This year, your senior year, a um, lot of load probably um, expected for you to be carrying on your shoulders. Talk to me about the personal growth that you feel like you've experienced in the last year. Um, yeah, it's been a lot. I mean, from last year, even I jumped up a lot in velocity and 
command and control. Uh, also just, you know, personally from freshman, sophomore year, I didn't play much at all. Um, and then junior year, I really just decided to try to get to it. And so making varsity that year was a big step up for me, a lot of big confidence boost. And now I'm just rolling with that confidence, rolling with that momentum to try to make a great senior year. You know, you mentioned your freshman and sophomore year not getting to play a lot. It's really a testament to your perseverance. A lot of kids could have just quit and stopped, but you, you know, kept going, that determination, perseverance. What kept you going through some of those times? And I'm sure there are a lot of times that you could have just said, ah, maybe this isn't me. I'm going to stick to basketball or whatever. Mm. Um, well, basketball was a big part of it. I mean, I loved, I lo still love the sport, um, but I always, you know, I wasn't the best at basketball either. And so it was kind of just, I used that as a driver. You know, I wanted to prove to myself, to my friends, my family that I could really, you know, stand out, be a star at something. Um, also, my family, my dad and my brother were big emphasis on that. Um, they pushed me, my dad, a lot, uh, especially. And I won't, always wanted to chase after my brother. You know, he, although he's, he uh, didn't play baseball as long as me, it was just, you know, something that I, I don't know, just brotherly love, got to be better than him at something. So that was a big reason. But just I love being out here with my friends, and, you know, that was just another reason to keep staying out here, keep you on. Yeah. To me, the team seems stronger, more physical. Do you feel the same? And then you individually, how do you feel versus last year? Uh, definitely. I mean, Coach A put us through the ringer this year. We got a lot of more time in the weight room compared to last year. Uh, a lot of guys I didn't know could move that much weight. Moved, we're moving a lot of weight, and so it was good to see that. Much, a lot of teams a lot stronger, hitting a lot more balls farther, harder. But personally, uh, I jumped maybe five miles an hour this year, and a lot of that's from the weight room. I mean, gained 20 pounds this year, just really trying to maximize the amount of work I can get in the off season. Uh, awesome. So I'm sure you have goals, both individually and team. Start with team. Talk me through those goals and then maybe what you have individually as well. Uh, for the team, just make playoffs. Win as much as we can. I mean, the taste of losing sucks. Did a lot last year. Don't want that ever again. So just for the team to rack up some wins, get some momentum going, be some of these teams that always, you know, chew us out, call us, throw us to the side, call us trash, just to prove it to them that we're here this year and that we'll be here for a long time is something that I really want for this team, especially the younger guys. We've got a lot of sophomores coming up, sophomores, juniors. So it would be good for them to create some momentum to keep leading strong, make a stronger program. Um, and for me, you know, right now I'm maybe high 80s. Just hit that 90 mark consistently would be pretty awesome for me. Uh, but goals, I mean, the awards are cool, but all I care about is winning. So that's what I'm really looking forward to. And we'll be back on the Maroon On Deck Show, right after these words. It's the wildflowers in spring, but when you're looking for a house, you're looking for a place to put down roots, a place to call home for years to come, which means you need a realtor with roots in the community, like Tate Property. Tate Property is a family-owned real estate brokerage located in Terrytown. We grew up here, we live here, and we work here, representing buyers and sellers of Austin's finest luxury homes, investment properties, and farm and ranch retreats. This is our passion. Give Tate Property a call at 512-474-8283. That's 512-474-TATE. Or look up online at tateproperty.com and let us know how we can help you today. Tate Property, exceptional homes, exceptional service. Get a win right here. As simple as playing baseball. I stay focused, Dial then. This is Jake Beck. Hey, Beck fires it over to third, and yes, the tag sir. is there! Nate Goulding. The great Goulding. Daryl Jones. Ho, ho, ho! This is Aiden Leonard. Leonard sends one to right field. This is Luke Brazaka. He got him. This is Charlie Reeves. Gonna bring home Reeves safe! I'm Jack Unberhagen. A three-run shot by Lumberjack Unberhagen. As he this is Jaden Bessa. Coach A sending him. This is Logan Kenny. He sends a shot to the outfield. This is James Scott. He got Toledo, James Scott! Austin High Baseball Play-by-Play -play is brought to you by Plains Capital. Strong roots for a strong future. Financial products and services tailored to your needs. 8118 Dental Professionals. Dental care focused on whole body wellness. Sportsman's Barbershop. A friendly neighborhood barbershop located in Bryker Wood at 3702 Jefferson. 
Horizon Bank. Since 1905, Horizon has been proud to work with local businesses across Central Texas and beyond. Hit Forth. At Hit Forth, we're hardcore about data-driven player development. Nance Orthodontics. Seamless, state-of-the-art orthodontic treatment focused on you. Terrytown Pharmacy. Innovative care. Timeless service. By Tate Property. Exceptional homes. Exceptional service. Get the people going. Let's go! Everybody needs a little bit of Papa Scott and Willard of Oz. And he drops it! Run comes across! That's what's happening! That's what I'm talking about! Win! Once again, Josh Willard and James Scott. Beautiful rendition of our national ball. anthem as we're getting set here at the burger at the ballpark. Ballpark at burger? We'll get the gist of it, you know. Let's do this, Let's man. Let's do this thing, and Papa Scott going to set our lineup here for us. Yeah, we got the lineup for the Anderson Trojans. Batting first and playing center field, number 28, Ed Small. Batting second and playing second base, number six, uh, Wainwright. Batting third and playing first base, number 12, Crowley. Batting fourth in left field, number 16, Paez. Batting fifth and playing right field, Begert, number 11. Batting third and playing third base, I'm sorry, batting sixth and playing third base, number 10, Ben Weissman. Batting seventh and DHing, number 12, Munin. Batting eighth and playing shortstop, uh, number four, Hayes, Haynes, sorry. And batting last, number nine, number 22, batting ninth, uh, Steve Sazenda and catching. Set the Maroons defense on the mound. We have uh, starting pitcher senior Jake Beck, catching James Scott, also known as Sarge. Over at first base, we have Jaden Besa. Second base, Logan Kinney. Shortstop, Javi Godinez. Third base, Luke Pazanka. Left field, we've got uh, Drew Anderson. In center field, we have number 11, Ty Schreiber. And in right field, we have number 13, the Lumberjack himself, Jack Unberhagen. Well, I mean, it's, it's good to have Jake Laser back out on the bump to start things off for the Maroons as we get the regular season district race started here. And uh, yeah, yeah, so, I mean, what we've got here is, you know, the, the depth of this team or the Probably the strength of this team is going to be the pitching staff. We have Jake Beck back. We have Luke Pazanka, second team all district pitcher last year. Uh, Jaden. Jaden Besa, Logan Kenny is coming back. And we have some uh, sophomores that have come up and some other juniors that have actually come up new to varsity. Uh, so we're going to really see a lot of depth there. But what a battle we've got here right to start is it's going to be Ed Small uh, for starting the for the Trojans, five, leading Ed things off. Small. Small had a great year last year. The sophomore came on. Or was he a freshman last year? No, he was, uh, he's a, he could be a sophomore. No, I, he's at least a junior, if not a senior. Okay, so he's. I think he might be a senior. He's leading things off. And he's got a, he's got a boomstick in the arsenal. So it'll be a good little battle here to start things off. Here at Berger. This one foul tip and Sarge. That's it. That one behind. Yeah, it's 87 mile an hour fastball to start it off by Jake Beck. Ed Small has decided to play football at the next level. He had a scholarship offer from University of Texas in baseball. Decommitted from that a few months ago. This breaking ball missing up top. Where do you, where do you end up going for football? Uh, to my knowledge, it has not been announced yet. Uh -huh. 
hard to turn down the, the scholarship over to UT for baseball. But he's that kind of athlete. He's a dual sport threat for sure. As this one hit high into shallow right. And it is going to be caught there. Is that Umberhagen? That's Umberhagen, Lumberjack. Lumberjack coming up big here to start things off. One out. And we're a beautiful night here in Austin, Texas. Now about 73 the degrees via the KXA and app. If you're in Austin, get the app. Papa Scott knowledge from last year. Never never turned me down wrong. So All one right. out here. Brings up second baseman Trevin Wainbright. Wainbright, sorry. Jake into the windup. Got him swinging on strike one right there. Good stuff. My introduction to Jake Beck was last year in the tournament at the the Border Olympics down in Laredo. He had an unbelievable outing. Yeah, he did. He pitched far better than his stats uh, showed because there are so many games last year yes. that Coach A didn't really have any other options and had to leave him in well past it when he was tired. This one missed up top. Even the count, one ball, one strike. That's one thing about stats, man. They can be misleading for your value to your team. This one hit right back to Beck. He gets it in the glove easily. He's going to underhand it over to Jaden Base on first. And that's the second out here in the top of the first. Good work right there now by for the Jake. Number 12, Quick reaction Seth getting Crowley. that one. Yep, Seth Crowley up. He's your first baseman. No real wind here. The flag is pretty dead here. So, first pitch in for breaking ball, just missing inside. You know that's something. When we first got here, that wind was kicking up pretty good. But I guess as the sun set, the wind died down. Even Mother Nature respects the beginning of the regular season. Here's the 1-0 pitch. This one hit again, oh, kind of fat, and it's going to go past the second baseman. It makes the out over at first, and that was on second. Good, good play, Logan Kenny. Logan Kenny. Kenny over to Besa. Great job right there from the Maroons defense. And uh, we're going to take this 0-0 zero -zero tie into the bottom of the first. We'll be right back with the more. Uh, we, do we have a commercial? Yes, yeah, so we'll send it to a commercial break here. Again, this is Papa Scott, the Willard of Oz, and Lulu giving us some ones and twos tonight on producing. We'll be right back with Maroon Baseball. Do you need a haircut? A real haircut? One that's tapered or blocked, clipped or trimmed just the way you like it? Come let the licensed barbers at the Sportsman's Barbershop take care of you. The Sportsman's Barbershop is a friendly, no-frills neighborhood barbershop located in Austin's Brikerwood area. Our barbers specialize in traditional haircuts for men and boys, along with beard trims and straight razor shaves. The trophies and mounts donated by customers that line the barbershop walls serve as testaments to over 60 years of serving Austin. Give the guys a call, 512-459-9525 to schedule Schedule your appointment today or look us up online at sportsmansbarbershop.com. The Sportsman's Barbershop, an Austin institution. Welcome back here to the bottom of the first as Austin High gets three quick outs and some good defense behind Beck there to start things off. Hey, I did get a check. Ed Small is a junior. A junior. Should yeah. have been a sophomore. Yeah. Yep, sure is. And forgive us, we're kind of yelling over the speaker here for a second. In between innings, it might be a little difficult. Yeah, it sounds like they improved the uh, sound system over here at Burger yep. over the offseason. It is booming, and it's right next to us. Hey, real quick, uh, Anderson uh, last year was 19 and 12. That was a good year. 19, 12, and 1, as a matter of fact, 8 and 8, tied for fifth in District 26 6A. And they have eight returning 
uh, returners it wow. off for the from last year. Shortstop number two, Javier Godinez. Javi Godinez leading off. And we'll get the our batting order in just one second for those of you keeping score at home. Pull up a chair, enjoy some maroon baseball. Looks at strike one inside low. Godinus is hitting leadoff and playing it short. Batting second and catching is Scott. Third and playing first base is Besa. Oh, one pitch. Almost the same location, but just missing now. He evens the count. One ball, one strike. Batting cleanup and playing third base, Bazanka. Fifth and right field is Lumberjack Unberhagen. Sixth and playing second base is Logan Kinney. Batting seventh and DHing sophomore Henry Shooter making his varsity debut. As is batting eighth and playing left field, Drew Anderson. Batting ninth and playing center also making his varsity debut, Ty Schreiber. We got a 1-1 count here on Godinas making his very first appearance for varsity. Out off right behind him. One ball, two strikes. And again, that's something we learned about last year's team. They were just such a young roster. And even this year, still a lot of youth. Yeah, we lost, uh, what, about seven players last year. Um, so fouled off again. Liz to play another pitch. But we're able to, you know, get a lot of the uh, juniors last year, seniors this year, some uh, playing time, as well as uh, quite a few sophomores last year that are now juniors. So hopefully it'll pay off this year. I mean, and you think about Anderson finishing fifth in the district last year, tied for fifth. It's just a competitive dif district from top to bottom. Yeah, yeah, it sure is. I just noticed the flag is starting to blow straight in. So that's a south breeze right into the, uh, the batter's face. That is not home field advantage. No. This one just misses outside. It's a 60 Good mile eye. an hour, 68 mile an hour knuckleball or, or off speed, straight off speed. We could pay homage to Tim at Wakefield. I'm okay with the knuckleball call. Yeah. Look like a floater. Intentional or not. 2-2 two -two count. Gets hit hard to short. A one hopper snagged and fired over the first for the out. Good competitive play right there. Defensive play for the Trojans. One out here in the bottom of the first. Brings up number three, starting catcher. Now batting for the Maroon. James Scott catcher, Jr. Number three, Good old James Sarge. Scott. Sarge had a, a good season last year. Played a lot of left field as we had Jackson Lynn Roth. All-timer all for Austin High. Because this one misses low inside for ball one. But had a lot of games catching behind the plate, too. The 1-0 pitch. This one fouled off behind us. One and one the count. But who am I to talk about? James Scott. Well, we've got his father sitting next to me. There we go. Real quick, the... Uh Outfield distance of Berger. We have 311 down left field line, 401 to center, 341 down right field. Canaveras is like the uh, old Astrodome almost. Good eye right there from Sarge. Two balls, one strike. I think the deepest part of this park is actually right center, about 410. God, I remember when Lumberjack yeah. went over the fence. And That's right a heck of a shot, city. man. Oh, yeah. Here's the 2 1. Got him swinging on that breaking ball right there. Two and two to count. Yeah, that's 66 mile an hour curve. Good placement on that pitch. Two strikes, choke up. Good eye right there, being patient. Maybe something last year we saw Sarge, you know, take, take some chances on. So just, I mean, right there, some good plate awareness. Full count. looking right there and so strike three will bring up number one Jaden Besa starting first baseman now batting for the Maroons first base is one of those one. sophomores from Jayden last year Besa. they got a lot of playing time 
just found a way to get the ball in play. Had a had a really nice batting average and just backed it up in the field as well on defense. Yeah, I think he's one of the best defensive first basemen in the district. Ooh, this one hung inside a long time, almost almost got him there for a hit pitch, but he goes in for ball one. Two outs here in the bottom of the first. 0-0 zero, zero our score. This one just catching the inside of the strike zone. One ball, one strike. He's a crafty lefty. This one outside. Two balls, one strike. Got to get a base runner on. Let's get somebody on. From the wind up. This one hit hard to shortstop. One hop as well. He fires it over to first. First baseman makes a great effort and gets the out there. Three outs We're for the Maroons. The one. As we go down to the zero. top of the Maroons. Zero. zero to zero our score here. Good defensive outing for both teams. And we'll take a quick commercial break and be right back with more Maroon Baseball here on the Bike Live Network and the Austin Maroon Athletic YouTube channel. We'll be right back. Real estate companies come and go in Central Texas about as fast as the wildflowers in spring. But when you're looking for a house, you're looking for a place to put down roots, a place to call home for years to come, which means you need a realtor with roots in the community like Tate Property. Tate Property is a family owned real estate brokerage located in Terrytown. We grew up here, we live here, and we work here, representing buyers and sellers of Austin's finest luxury homes, investment properties, and farm and ranch retreats. This is our passion. Give Tate Property a call at 512-474-8283. That's 512-474-TATE. Or look up online at tateproperty.com and let us know how we can help you today. Tate Property, exceptional homes, exceptional service. And welcome back here to Austin High Baseball here as we go to the top of the second. And Jake Beck back on the mound again, a, a quick inning. Has some help from the defense with a great play by Mr. Kenny to get out of the inning at the top. And then number Aiken had a nice catch out there in the outfield. And next up for the Trojans, it's going to be the 4 5 6 slot. Yeah, Paez, Beggert, and Wasman. Left fielder, right fielder, third baseman. Third the Trojans, number 15, Derek Paez. The lefty coming to the plate. Great pitch right there to start things off. Got him looking on strike one. It's 88 mile an hour fastball. Two different styles of pitching here. Jake is bringing some heat and a devastating curve slider. Merrill seems to be sitting around 80 miles an hour on the fastball with some off speed, very crafty lefty. And for strike two, only 10 pitches thrown for Beck so far. Man, you love seeing that. Here comes the 0-2 pitch. Got him to chase when it fouled off. Called it a foul ball off the batter. Count stays at 0-2. And, and that's the thing, just being efficient with the pitches and keeping that pitch count low. But knowing that you've got depth behind you now definitely doesn't make you feel like, you know, Beck needs to get out there and throw a full game. Retry, take two of the 0-2. Fouled off again. Oh, and that's another thing. Coming back for year two. Up here in the booth with my bud. Great Scott. I know where to park my car with foul balls now. <laughs> Good. To Did you learn the hard way last year? Almost. Almost paid the price. But nowhere to keep the car safe here at Burger. Just excited to be back here doing games. 
for this really exciting team. Here's the 0-2 pitch again. This one outside, patient right there. From Derek Paez. Yep. Yep. Yeah, we talked in the pregame show, you know, three or four innings, probably all you're going to get out of Jake today. Because, it, you know, it's so early in the season, you're, they're not stretched out yet, we the haven't pitchers. We have hit all those tournaments that the, that the boys play. I, that's what amazed me is just forgetting about how many games they're playing in, in yeah. the regular season. 0-2 pitch, makes them crouch down low. That just misses low. Count evens out now, two balls, two strikes. This is now going to be the sixth pitch of this at-bat. Come get him right here, Jake. I bet a big 12-6 hook. Goes fastball, 88, outside. Full count, good battle right here at the plate. Here in the top of the second, 0-0 our score. This is the first batter of the inning. Yeah, you can feel the excitement from the crowd and the teams. I mean, you know, this is a district game. This counts just as much as the games in March and April. And we had some amazing finishes that just didn't fall our way last year here at Berger. Full count pitch about off. The at-bat that seems to go on forever continues. So we'll do the full count, take two. That comes downhill and oh yeah oh, oh that's a 50 50 call that didn't go our way it's a 75 mile an hour curveball on the outside must have just missed that, outside now that, that looked, looked like we were number 11 dead spot on it, so just missed I'd like to see us maybe get that call back a little bit later mm, no doubt so the first runner on the bags tonight is going to be the trojans no outs here in the top of the first you know, I'd expect a lot of bunting and a lot of stealing this year from both Austin High and some of our competitors. Sarge coming down out of a stance to get that, but stays in the strike zone. No balls, one strike. Way to take command as Beck steps off the bag. You know, that's one of the things that makes college ball and high school ball really, really exciting, entertaining is you know, you don't see a lot of guys playing for the long ball here. It's fundamental baseball, and that's usually who's going to win the game. The Crockett AISD tournament last year finish. Uh, we were trailing, I believe it was three to one or three to two, going into the last inning. That was some incredible baseball. Yes, it was. Check swing, and he didn't go. I thought that was going to be called strike two. It's not. One ball, one strike. It looks like he's just missing a little bit on the corners. Oh my goodness, what did we call a double play last year? Pitcher's best friend. <laughs> you got me there, great Scott. Mm-hmm. We could go for one of those right here. One and one count. Steps off the bag. Good job by Jaden Bass of snagging that. Runner safe. One pitch, breaking ball, oh, nice. nasty movement on that. That is what the kids call nasty. One ball, two strikes. Go ahead and take care of this batter and then bring up the next one into a double play. One, two pitch. There Got you go. swinging on strike three. Beck's first strikeout of the night. And therefore, first strikeout of the season. <laughs> now batting for the Trojans, number 10, Ben Wasman. I'm telling you, I mean, it was remarkable how many, you know, one play, two plays per game last year that we, we were in games until the very end. That Lake Travis game that we had yeah. here had two to one going into the last inning. I yeah. mean, it was, there was some exciting baseball that I think, you know, you learn through those, and this year comes out. You, you, you win more of those games than you lose. This you one know, misses high, ball one. Those that were not with us last year will probably chuckle when I say this, but we had to be the best 6-24 and 24 <laughs> team, 
team in all of high school baseball because we were probably 10 plays out of 30 games away from being 15 and 15. This one, check swing, I think he went. There you go. One ball, one strike. That's a great block by Sarge. He doesn't block that ball that guy's on first is going to second. That keeps the double play in order. Stuff like that is what makes the difference between, you know, some pretty average uh, blockers and, and some elite blockers. And I've always thought that's probably the best element of his game from a catching standpoint. It's a defensive mindset. This one just missing, ball two. Two balls, one strike with one out, runner on first. You know, if you're a pitcher, you've got to have confidence in your catcher that if you throw a three and two slider low and away, something in the dirt, that that catcher is going to stop it. And you're not going to just have a track meet on the bases. Checks the runner over at first. Safe, comes back, two balls, one strike. Shout out to Lulu, again our producer on the ones and twos, killing it. Here's the 2-1 pitch, breaks outside, three balls, one strike. Yeah, we have quite the crew here. We've got Shep over there on cameras, Alden on cameras, Lulu over here, Meg Green on sideline reporting. Oh, man. That walks runner over to first. So now runner's on first and second with one out as Sarge comes out. Gives back the old, hey, it's all good. We got Cabo Bobs. Now batting for the Trojans, number four, Bo Moonen. Bo Moonen up. Now is when you need the double play. How about a one pitch, two out play here? We could definitely go for that as coming into the inning, only had nine pitches thrown. So 16 thrown this inning. 18. He's up to 26. Yowza. Yep. That's basic math. Back steps off. Sarge is going to go back out. No, oh, it looks like the umpire is saying something to Anderson Bench. It's the beginning of the season. Everybody's excited. Little chatter's always good. Sure. Got a little passion. I mean, and, and again, though, I mean, this this district, I just can't say enough about it. Each road game is always a, a, a lot of fun going to the lakes, Westlake, Lake Travis, even Buda Johnson. That's been a fun, fun series. This one low. Good block by Sarge. One ball, no strikes. Back just needs to resettle down. You know, strike zone. As we go through the season, watch Javi Godinas over there at shortstop. I th really think that he has the opportunity to be a difference maker. He really has some spectacular range. Good pitch right there. Sarge holds that one clear as day. As long as Javi, he's a very passionate player, as long as he can stay focused and locked in, make the everyday play, I think he might be looking for some postseason awards this year. He's that good defensively. I mean, varsity's ball is no joke. It's a lot faster. Sarge keeps it in front. Two balls, one strike. I mean, we just saw the growth again. We're just going back to how young the, the team was last year and again, having all those guys back this year. Just a lot of maturity and Javier looking to stamp his his claim to the, to the starting mix. Two balls, one strike. Runners on first and second with one out. This one hit foul down the first baseline. Two balls, two strikes with one out. It's a big at bat here in the in the ball game here early on. Let us know where you're listening in from. How do they how do they let us know? AHS Maroon Baseball at gmail.com. Yeah. AHS Maroon, singular, know. not plural. Baseball.com. You know where you're listening from and who you're listening for. It's okay to say Papa Scott, Lulu, and I. It's okay. That's true. I should say AHS Maroon Baseball at gmail.com. 
let us know. We want to know for sure. You can get at us on, we're still going to call it Twitter. No, we'll say X. This one hit hard Double over play. the second. Kenny able to flip it to second. Coming back to first is Javier. Good job by oh. Jaden Besa. Yeah, that's a nice play by Besa, keeping that ball from Did a good job getting behind him. Yeah, scooped it well and a good job to get the force at second. Runners on the corner with the two first, outs. Number 18, Colin Haynes. 31 pitches thrown for Beck here. Good job by Kenny getting it over there. And, and I could definitely see what you're saying about Javier, the potential there. A good job flipping his hips, and it was a non-target throw. Yeah, he's going to show a lot of range out there. Again, if he can make the everyday play, he's going to be a difference maker. He's got the talent. So the first run 90 feet away for the Trojans. Good pitch right there by Beck. Starts things off right here on the 0-1 pitch. Got his first strikeout this inning. It'd be a great way to get out of this one. Ty Schreiber playing shallow with out there in center. Drew Anderson is also shallow and left. Now in the scrimmages, uh, Oz Drew showed a lot of range out there. He went and go went and go went to go get some balls. Yeah. And got some balls is what I'm trying to say. So they've got some speed. We are a far more athletic team this year, like we were talking in the pregame show, than we were last year. We're stronger, faster, and when you play in a big ballpark like this, that speed's gonna play both offensive and defensively. Oh one pitch. Ooh, and that he's coming home. No. Quickly reacts. Runner advances from first to second. Runners on second and third, but Sarge quickly out of the stance to hold that runner over at third. There's a lot of room behind the behind home plate here too. So I have to cover a lot of ground on pass balls like that. One ball, one strike. This is high, two balls, one strike. Jake Slavering out there now. It's 26 pitches this inning. He's up to 34 in the game. Got to find a way to get out on this at bat. Yeah, and then we need to get the bats going to give him some time to recoup. Two one pitch just misses high. Tight strike zone tonight here for the out. Yeah, Jake is asking where that ball is. Is it high? He's getting a little frustrated out there. I mean, when he's missing, he's just barely missing. Three balls, one strike. Good lead off on third. This one hit foul, so it brings us to a full count here. Bottom of the second, or excuse me, top of the second. Three balls, two strikes, two outs with the runner on second and third. Would love to find a way to get the, leave these guys stranded. Payoff pitch. Oh, oh holy Toledo! Looking. Yes, sir. What a job by Jake Beck. Great stuff right there. Great poise shown by Beck to get out of the inning, leaving two stranded on the backs for the Trojans. And we go down to the bottom of the second. And do we have a potential interview? We do. We have a reader by Matt. Matt Green, our sideline correspondent. Matt, can you hear us? Yes. Go ahead, Matt. Take it away. Or you can visit us on the web at lesbank.com. All right, I think we're having a little technical difficulties there with Matt.
Uh, we'll get that cleaned up for sure. We'll get that cleaned up. But, man, that was a lot to digest it there in the top of the second. Um, some defense had to come up big, and a great job by Logan Kinney getting that force on the flip over to second. Almost turned the double play. But, again, great poise shown by Beck to get out of the inning there with the last strikeout, having two strikeouts yeah. in the second. We, we need to get a little rally going here. Let Jack go over there, get some water, sit on the bench, rest his legs, rest his arms a little bit. Shout out to Suna Benkat. We got her here providing support. As we, we've stepped up the game this year on the production value. We've got a, other camera angles. We've got a lot of student involvement. Yeah, we're going to have cam cameras moving around, catching the action. Alden and Shep got the action over there tonight. Done a great job with all that. And starting things off here in the bottom of the second is going to be number 14, Luke Pazanka. Luke Pazanka. He'll probably Luke come in to Pizanka. pitch next, I would guess. You know, being this early in the season, the guys aren't stretched out as much in a lot of games. It'll be and, uh, really interesting to see how Coach A uh, uh, works a pitching staff this early in the season. And Luke, I mean, talk about changing the pace on the mound. He takes command. This one low and away for ball one. It's a good idea. We need to take and make this guy throw some strikes and throw some pitches, get him up there. You know, he's thrown 17 to Jake's 37. I think it was a couple of walks there for Beck in that inning. But two strikeouts. And again, the most important stat, no runs across for the Trojans. This one foul off at the concession stand. Don't get in the nachos. One ball, one strike. There you go, that's 78 mile an hour fastball on the outside. A little wide. Maybe we get back that call from earlier. Yeah, I mean, listen, uh, so far he's been very consistent on both sides. That's all you can ask. You just got to figure out where his strike zone is and, and know it. Check swing. He's going to say he's no, safe. No. Checks over with the first base. There you go. That's ball. It's 3 1 count now. That's good. Let's get that pitch count up. Come on. Three balls, one strike. On deck for the Maroons is Lumberjack Unberhagen. Oz Luke is going to Regis University in Colorado. Oh. This one. Popped up high in the infield, second baseman calling everyone off. He's able to get under it. Took him five pitches to do so. First out here in the top of the or bottom of the second. Now batting for the Maroons, right field. Yeah, I think they're looking the at him as a pitcher, Jack. but uh, you know, as good a bat as he's got, he may do a little pitcher first or pitcher third, something like that. Umberhagen was the lone Maroon that went yard for us last year so he's got the boomstick he does and, to, oh go ahead well for those of you not familiar with our district that may seem a little odd that we only had one guy go yard last year but again this ballpark is huge so when you <laughs> play a half of your games in a bigger than a major league stadium that's uh, that can tell you why some of our guys our district foes play in very short ballparks which can be misleading on postseason stats um, Lumberjack right there swinging on strike two behind quickly, 0-2. Calls the time, last second. Throwing off the tempo that the pitchers kind of started this at-bat. O2 pitch to Lumberjack. And gets him on the drop, third strike. Play at first, got him out. So two outs here in the bottom of the second. And that'll bring up number 12. Is that Logan Kinney? That is now Logan Kinney. The, Maroons, the second baseman, number 12, Logan Kinney. Kinney made a lot of debuts on the mound last year as a sophomore. Had a great out already tonight at second base. Yeah, I think he's primed for a really good season this year. You just got a lot of a lot of guys with a lot of varsity experience, man. That stuff matters. 
Swings on strike one there. Yeah, Chase one maybe a little bit too high. Yeah, 82 mile an hour fastball up and away. Great turnout though here for both squads. This one hit hard in the outfield. Center fielder has to come up to play it again. You got to cover a lot of ground here at Berger. And he does get the out. So three outs here quickly. Only 10 pitches thrown. That inning, so 26 pitches thrown. And that'll take us to the end of the second inning. And do we have a commercial? All right, we'll be back with more. Real estate Group companies baseball. come and go in Central Texas, about as fast as the wildflowers in spring. But when you're looking for a house, you're looking for a place to put down roots, a place to call home for years to come, which means you need a realtor with roots in the community, like Tate Property. Tate Property is a family-owned real estate brokerage located in Terrytown. We grew up here, we live here, and we work here, representing buyers and sellers of Austin's finest luxury homes, investment properties, and farm and ranch retreats. This is our passion. Give Tate Property a call at 512-474-8283. That's 512-474-TATE. Or look up online at tateproperty.com and let us know how we can help you today. Tate Property, exceptional homes, exceptional service. All right, we can hear the Oz going. Sorry, man. You got the PA speakers working. Welcome back here to Austin High Baseball here at Burger. Papa Scott, Lulu on the ones and twos. We got a, we got a, a, a producing squad with us. Shout out to the Austin High program. Is that the is it the Bishop booster class or? Yeah, AV is combined with the Booster Club and Coach Riley to try to take up our level of play this year. Got ourselves a Donnie Brook here. Going into the top of the third, 0 0 our score. Back back on the mound. Leading it off of the Trojans, number 22, Steven Shajinja. We're at the end of the lineup for the Trojans, the 9 1 2 spot coming up. Yep, Steven Sajinja. He's uh, a senior, I believe. He's out of the Wings, Austin Wings program. This one hit hard to center field. Does a good job calling off everyone and gets under that for the first out here. Okay, that's what the doctor ordered. One pitch, one out, baby. We need that for sure. And again, just good to know that you got a good defense behind now back you. Now the Trojans, number five, Ed Small. Now back up to the top of the order, Ed Small. His first at bat, I believe that was. Uh, yeah, he flew out to Lumberjack. That's right. So made good connection on the ball. Yeah, we'll get to some scores around the league here, at least who's playing who. We're, we're still checking on some of the scores. That's the way to go on first pitch, strike one. So around our district, obviously, we have uh, our game here, Anderson and Austin. Uh, Buta Johnson is at Lake Travis tonight. Uh, can both teams lose? <laughs> and uh, Bowie is at Dell Valley tonight. Shout out to those programs that have fight. We like to be competitive, and this is a super competitive district. I mean, we had Berger rocking last year in some of those games. One and one the count, small at the plate. One out here. It's Beck steps off. From the wind up, the one one pitch. Inside, Woo! we got a call right there. Right there, we'll take that for sure. One ball, two strikes. Could be a real momentum swinger here, right here, getting his third strike down. And this one hit hard in the left field on our horse to go get it in a great athletic play out there in left field. Drew Anderson. Drew Anderson covered a lot of ground to go get that. 
Great defense right there. Now batting for the Trojans, number six, Trevin Weinbright. Hey, there's some of our uh, district foes outfield. That you know that ball would have been gone. He probably hit that close to 300. And it was on a line, too. Which is technically the minimum UIL was going to allow. There have been some. We played up at, uh, what, Cedar Ridge, I think, for a scrimmage, and their center field was 345. Breaking ball right there for strike one. According to UIL, your shallowest, the most shallow a center field can be is 350 feet. 401 here. Yeah, that's a big 51 feet too, bud. That is. 0-1 pitch. This one hit on the ground to Kenny. First Cover first. Uh -huh. Comes off the bag, and Kenny not able to field that cleanly. So on with a two-out single. And so that was interesting right there as Jaden came off the bag. And now back to the good job getting on his well, horse to go cover. Probably. Yeah. But not able to field that one cleanly. That's all right. Let's get this one. Ten pitches thrown this inning for Beck. This one hits the outside corner for strike one. To where the ball crosses the plate now. Well, I tell you what, Jake is really making James's uh, mid pop. He's throwing hard. Showing signs of letting up at all right now through 45 pitches. Check swing. Sarge not able to clean that, field that one as the runner advances over to second. That one just dropped off at the last second as he flipped the mitt. One ball, one strike. With the runner on second, two outs. Nobody holding runner on at second. 1-1 one, one pitch, and that one hit him. Hits mm. the batter now, puts the runner on first. All right, so we had two outs to start it pretty quick. We had that one sort of error uh, over at second, and we can't, you know, let's not let this thing snowball. Let's go ahead and close them out right here. Left two stranded on the bags last inning. Trying to do the same here now. Runners on first and second, two outs. Swings on, chases one down low for strike one. No balls, one strike. This one, a shot sent out to center field, but a good job of tracking this one and stays under it for the out. These two stranded, so four runners stranded on the bags now for the Trojans through three, and Austin High still has a chance right here to find a, the first run here in the ball game as we go now to the bottom of the third, and we will take a quick commercial break. Yes, I need to check my schedule. Cheer on your Austin High School baseball team and enjoy the spring season with ease thanks to Terrytown Pharmacy. We're not just a pharmacy, we are a neighborhood health hub offering prescription services, immunizations, home delivery, and a charming selection of gifts for any occasion. Whether you're celebrating a win or supporting a player, find the perfect gift and keep your health in check at Terrytown Pharmacy. Let's celebrate health, wellness, and community spirit together. We're back on the Maroon on Deck show with tonight's starting pitcher, Jake Beck, some guy I've known since he's about in the first grade. Jake, congratulations on the start tonight. How far do you think you could actually go, this being the 19th, 20th of February? 
Uh, right now, I'd probably say four to five innings of pretty solid uh, consistency. I mean, once I get to a certain amount of pitches, my arm will start to drag a little bit, but should be a solid four to five of pretty hot stuff. And so we'll go from there. All right, sorry, a little, little technical difficulties there. We'll get back to another little run from Jake later. If you, That was a little sneak peek of the interview that we had in our pregame show. So if uh, you missed our pregame show, please uh, rewind and watch maybe after this game. Uh, always good to hear from Jake back. Starting things off here. In the bottom of the third, number 19 for the Maroons. Henry Shooter, Henry sophomore Shooter. Henry Shooter. His first at-bat on varsity. It's a ball one. Looks like a curve. Outside, two balls, no strikes. 78 mile an hour fastball. But you know his heart's beating. He got us a good ball game here for sure. This one misses down low. Three balls, no strikes ahead early. Hey, scores around the uh, district. Bowie is out in front of Del Valley, three to nothing in the bottom of the third at Del Valley. <laughs> Loyal forever. Those were the fans that stuck with us through the Del Valley games last year. This one in for strike one. We went on the road to Del Valley at the end of the season, and <laughs> I think we had a game until 1 a.m. Yes, we did. We were getting a little loopy there at the end. Three balls, one strike. Shooter fouls this one off to a full count. Three balls, two strikes. Again, driving that pitch count up. On deck for the Maroons is number seven. And that is Drew, Drew Anderson. Anderson. Yeah. Great snag at the top of the third as we, that was the second out on small. Full count pitch. Good eye, Henry. Check swing, gets a runner on the back here early. Way to no go. Runs. Don't you know he feels a little weight off of his shoulders? Now yes. batting for the Maroons, the left fielder, number seven, Drew Anderson. Drew Anderson now at the plate, and this is when you might want to see one of those bunt calls. Get yeah. some more runners on. Yeah, that's a good, good point there, Oz. Hey, and it, one other score from around the district. We've got uh, Buta Johnson and Lake Travis. Buta Johnson is up one to nothing in the second, bottom of the second, at Lake Travis. Showing bunt, and he there puts you it go. down nicely. That's right a good one. The pitcher, runner. Oh runner yes! Comes off the bag, so he's on safe at first. Advances the runner over to second with no outs here. That's why you bunt. You put the pressure on the defense. There's so many kids that grow up now that don't want to bunt, but it's stuff like that. There's a reason in college and high school you bunt a lot, now, and you just put so much pressure on them. You know, the Merle makes that play. 99 times out of 100 this time with the pressure of the game he just didn't make it yeah forced the defense to make the play and did a good job right there and again drew showcased the defensive speed now showing it right there on the offensive side too so that brings up now number 11 to the plate and that's center ty fielder ty schreiber ty yeah schreiber had himself a couple of good snags hey, i wouldn't defensively i wouldn't be surprised if we bun again here And he shows it here last second. First baseman coming way up. And he puts it down right on the third baseman. Nobody there to cover the bat. Oh, yeah. Gets the mm. force over at third. The runners that replace over at first and second. Drew is on, over there on second base. And that was Henry Shooter. He, uh, Shooter was at second. Uh, Anderson was at first. And it was a good bunt. But, uh, you know, when you square that early, um, you know, he, uh, you allow the first baseman, third baseman to charge, and th third baseman came in, turned around, hit the shortstop with the ball, which is the right play. So back to the top of the order we go for the Maroons. Number two, Javier Godinas. Godinas. One out here. Javier fouling this one off behind us. No windows shattered on that one. No balls, one strike. Got a 
find a way to capitalize with two on the bags already. You got good speed out there too with Anderson and Schreiber. This one low gets away. Scoots right through. Runners are going to be able to advance. That is huge. That's huge right there. Base hit scores two now. I love that right there. Coach A turning three, looking with them. That was awesome. Love the excitement around this program. I'm telling you. There's plenty of room on the bandwagon. That one will score a wild pitch because it did hit the dirt, but that's one that I think Sajinja makes uh, probably 99% of the time. It just one of those things just squirted on through. Maroons got their first run 90 feet away. The second run just another 90 feet behind that. This one low. The catcher does a good job blocking that one. Two balls, one strike at the plate. One out. Runners on second and third. Again, that's Schreiber over on second and Henson. Checking myself, checking myself. Yourself is good. <laughs> oh. Two one pitch. This one misses low inside. Three balls, one strike. Pitch count driving now up for the Trojans. Just have fun with it, man. Have fun. Yeah, everybody just, you know, big hit right here. Just every, get everybody relaxing a little bit. This one popped up. It's going to be foul. I think it's going to go out of play. On the shelter. As we used to say back in the day, off the heezy. The heezy? Yeah. Never heard that one. Okay. Mm. Could be cross-referencing some basketball there. That's okay. 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 Full count, three balls, two strikes at the plate. We're multi-sport lovers here. I'm sorry. We're multi-sport lovers here. Come you on know. Now. Talk about language there. Mm hmm Says the king of laces out. <laughs> oh, it reminds me of simpler times. This oh, yeah. Come on. Come on. It's going to bring home the first run of the game. Going head first. That one overthrown. Score, score, That's score, score. bring home Schreiber. Yes. And that advances Javier to second base here with one out. The Tro or the Maroons take a 2-0 lead here in the bottom of the third. Hey, that's excellent hustle by Godinas, too. He's all the way over at second base on that wild pitch. And obviously there were some errors in there, too. So 2-0 in our score here at Berger. And I'm telling you, man, <laughs> this 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 uh, Maroons baseball team was now so many close the games last catcher, year. Three, Don't be surprised James if this team really Scott. flips the script and competes. Here in this district, we got a we got a deep ball club and a lot of enthusiasm right there at the dugout. So that brings home two. It's two to nothing. Talk about somebody needs a little base hit so he can relax. <laughs> That's this guy up here. That would be Junior himself, good old Sarge. Forty pitches thrown as they leave him out there. You know, his last 10 games of the season last year, he actually hit 310. And it felt like it. It felt like, I mean, as the season progressed, he just settled into the varsity play. As did a good chunk of the roster. I yeah. felt like everybody was hitting there towards the end of the year. God. I'm, I'm blanking on the senior's name that had the – out there in right field had one of the best snags here at Berger. Oh, yeah, that's um, number seven it was. I'm yeah, that Cole, Jerry Cole. God, Jerry Cole. Yeah. I'm missing that name for sure. Yeah. I think he was at Oberlin University now, I believe. Sarge on that one. No balls, one strike. Javier over at second. Two to zero, our score here in the bottom of the third. This one going past the catcher again, so that moves Javier over into scoring position 90 feet away. One ball, one strike. All right, that's a big 90 feet and a big wild pitch because now a fly ball to mid center or mid mid outfield, middle depth is what I'm trying to say. That's a sack fly. It'll bring in Godinas from third. Infield in, all the way. 1-1 one, one pitch, and that hits Sarge? No. Yeah. 
That one missing high for ball two. Two balls, one strike. Ah. Behind us. Look no high. Yep. Started this inning only at 26 pitches thrown. Almost 20 thrown this inning. Man, he's almost up to where Beck is. 44 pitches thrown. This is going to be 45. Oh, Mr. 45. Yeah, he's uh -huh. right on it. Yeah, 77 mile an hour fastball is right on. Anytime you file it straight back, that means you're just a little bit under it. Two balls, two strikes, take two. Let's put the ball in play, bud. Let's bring home Godinez. This one popped up mm. high. Get out of play. Let's see if it gets out of play. It does. Off the. Easy. Again. But I'll tell you what, Merrill and Scott, they've had some battles in their two at bats. A lot of pitches thrown. A lot of foul balls, a lot of just misses. Let's see what happens here. Pitch number eight this at bat. I believe so. Foul tip. Just got a piece of it right there. Threw him a change. Just be patient, find the pitch. I tell you, he's really a crafty pitcher out there. Yeah. And for you to throw a straight change on a 2-2 pitch in this situation you don't know what he's going to throw whenever good eye the ball high right there stays patient on it and gives us a full count yeah six to eight mile an hour another change it seemed like there's a big pitch right here Take some time with the coach A. Full count. One man out. Javier on third. The nice lead off. We're on top two to zero, looking to add to it. This one there he goes, tag. Outfield. Let's see if Javier gets back on Yeah, the you're going to go. He does. Go, 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 go. Get third. there, get there, get There's there. Plate. Safe. In. Yes. So Scott Abel. Oh, they called him out? What? There's no. They called him out? They, he, was, he tagged up. Oh, my. So thought we had the third run coming across, and they're saying that Good. he didn't tag off and left early. Grief. Matt, see if you can get exactly what the umpire call was down there, if you could, sir. Wow. That one hurts the soul a little bit. So, yeah, it's still 2-0 to zero as we go now to the top of the fourth. The Maroons should have had one right there. Phantom call right there. And we'll be right back. Do you need a haircut? A real haircut? One that's tapered or blocked, clipped or trimmed just the way you like it? Come let the licensed barbers at the Sportsman's Barbershop take care of you. The Sportsman's Barbershop is a friendly, no-frills neighborhood barbershop located in Austin's Brikerwood area. Our barbers specialize in traditional haircuts for men and boys, along with beard trims and straight razor shaves. The trophies and mounts donated by customers that line the barbershop walls serve as testaments to over 60 years of serving Austin. Give the guys a call, 512-459-9525 to schedule your appointment today or look us up online at sportsmansbarbershop.com. The Sportsman's Barbershop, an Austin institution. All right, we're here, back here at Burger Ballpark. That was a tough play. We think that the call on that one was the umpire said that Javi left third early. 
from where I was, I looked, I watched the right fielder catch the ball, looked over at Javi, and it looked to me like he had just left at the same time. So obviously the umpire should have a better view of it than me and Coach A does too, but doesn't change the fact that, you know, Maroons are out two to nothing here going into the top of the fourth. Now batting for the yeah, Gus Beggert on Begert. right fielder. He's 0 for 1. He struck out in the second, struck out swinging. Hope you guys are enjoying this wherever you are, at home, traveling around the great state of Texas, driving in your car in Austin, or here at the ballpark. 73 mile an hour curveball, ball low. Jake Beck, that was his 50th pitch so far this game. Foul over to the right side. Evens the count at 1-1. Defense straight away, outfield straight, infield playing normal depth for nobody on. Curveball says in. Got that one for a strike. Wow, that looked like almost in the same spot. Must have been a little bit more inside. We're set just a little bit off to the first base side from home plate, so we're not directly behind the catchers. Oh, yeah, that's a great pitch. Nice job, Jake Beck. Now batting for the Trojans, number That's 10. That's his ben. third strikeout on the evening. He hasn't walked anybody tonight. He has hit a batter. Actually, I take that back. He's walked two. And one got on with an error. So actually no hits so far. Back working for the windup with nobody on. Here's the pitch. Oh, hi and inside. That's some chin music. That's what we call a sportsman's barbershop close shave. I think Lulu likes that one. It's 8.05 here at the ballpark at Burger Stadium. February 20th, 24. 24. Back to Ben Weissman. Foul just over to the left hand side, right hand side. Makes the count 1 1. Weissman actually walked in the second inning. Oz is bringing back some nachos from the concession stand here at uh, the ballpark at Burger Stadium. Curve ball, 73 miles an hour in for a called strike. I will say, Oz, that does smell good. I might have used the facilities, but I had to stop and see Miss Kathy over at the concession stand. Make sure to go pay her a visit. Befriend her. She's a powerful woman. She'll get you that Oz dog you've been looking for. I told her about that. Oh, that's a swing. Scott with the throw over to Jaden. Second out. I even got us some candy. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, told her about the chili cheese dog and how we need to get that on the menu. Now batting for the Trojans, number four. And what did oh, she say? Moonen. She said that it's too early <laughs> for that in the season. I respect that. I respect when you pull the chili cheese dog out. I think what she's saying is you hadn't raised your $100,000 you promised from last year. Yes, yes. I see what that, that is. Mm -hmm. That's where we start the fundraising tonight. Mm-hmm. Any donation, make sure you say in honor of the Willard of Oz. We'll track those numbers. Lulu's got the fundraising tracker ready. Just kidding. 
That's a foul ball down the left field line. This is uh, Bo Munin. Oh, my gosh. He is pour, pouring two bags of jalapenos on his nachos. It's okay. We didn't ride together to this game. No, we didn't. Thank God for open-air stadiums. That's a swing and a miss there. 0-2 the count. Two outs here in the top of the fourth. Bo Munin, he was a fielder's choice last time. From the windup, here comes the 0-2. Got him swinging on strike. Oh, that's a nice job. Nice job. Mentioned the mitt there by James Scott Jr. Good old Sarge. And the defense does well there. That's a quick half inning as we go now to the bottom of the fourth. And this is Austin High Baseball here on the Bike Live Network and the Austin Maroon Athletic YouTube channel. Give it a like, subscribe, unsubscribe, resubscribe. All right, we're back here at the uh, ballpark. Listening to a little funky town. Bottom of the fourth, two nothing Maroons. We've got uh, Jaden Besa, Luke Pazanka, and Jack Umberhagen up for the Maroons. After that very controversial call. Any word from Matt? on whether or not uh, that was called that uh, Javi left third early. It's got to be. Uh, that's the only thing I could imagine. Yeah, I'll be interested to talk with Coach A. Yeah. Yeah. To talk to him at the end of the game. I mean, because he was standing right there doing the sit-up. By the way, it's a happy birthday to Coach A. He is 27 years old today. Remember yeah, last year, we, we celebrated his birthday with him last year. Let's celebrate it right and get the dub. No doubt. I think if you ask him what it, it could name something that you wanted today, anything in the world, I think a win right here would probably be it. The boys are doing a good job setting us up for that. We're here in the bottom of the fourth with a 2-0 lead. Yep. Basic grounded to first. I'm sorry, grounded to short in the first. Good chunk of the lineup here for the Maroons. Yeah, three, four, and five. This one fouled off for strike one. And we have a new pitcher there for Anderson. Holtz is his name, right hander. William Holtz. Breaking ball just misses. Good eye from Beso. One and one to count. Oh, that was behind him. Just a bit inside, That's right. as Bob Euchre would say. I picture the mask with Jim Carrey. So you think you can dance. <laughs> Good job getting on the tippy toes right yeah. there. There you go. That's a ball up. 81 mile an hour fastball. Three balls, one strike. You know, I said it last year, base has always reminded me of Keith Hernandez, the legendary first baseman, lefty swinging, lefty throwing from St. Louis Cardinals, New York Mets. There you go. That's a heck of a player comp. We'll take that. That's base that takes the walk over to first, leading things off. And that brings up 
Number 14, Luke Pazanka. Cool hand, Luke Pazanka. He flew out, popped up to the Luke second baseman Pazanka. to lead off the second. All right, we're getting in a uh, courtesy runner. And the courtesy comes from number 24. Daryl Jones, DJ. Daryl came on playing some defense as well. Got into the starting Darryl lineup Jones. at the end of the season last year. I think a couple games. Had a couple of at-bats as well towards the end of the year. One fouled off. Strike one. Hey, Matt, give us a signal over here if you can hear us. All right, very good. Did you get some uh, some intel on that uh, that double play from last inning? Did they say that Javi left early? Yeah, they said he left a little early. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, that was good. Sorry, crowd yeah. noise drowned you out. That's a, that's a single to left field by cool hand Luke Pazanka. Nice little job there, Luke. Ripped one just past a shortstop there, but you heard it first from our insider. Left a now little bit early. The Maroons, the right fielder, so, 13, Matt, what did uh, what did Coach A think? Did he agree with him, or was it a half-hearted kind of argument that he had? Coach A didn't really say his opinion. He was just... Like that's what he said. Yeah, okay. All right, very good. That's Matt Green, sideline dugout correspondent. Brings up Lumberjack Umberhagen. Shows bunt, goes right back to the pitcher. Again, makes a defense. Nobody covering the bag, and he's not able to get there. Yeah. Oh. No. Uh oh. Riley's after him now. Yeah, that looks like he did keep his foot on the bag. Yeah, I kind of thought he did. So a good defensive play there by the second baseman. Coming all the way over there and keeping the foot on the bag. Good hand-eye coordination, but it advances runners to second and third with one out. Great play right there, and it looks like they're going to come talk about it. Yeah. They double down. So one out here in the bottom of the four. The runners I, does, I mean, great job by Lumberjack. Yeah, runners. yeah, uh, good job. Um, I hear Coach Riley's uh, argument, but it, he looked like he was safe to me. It was a heck of a play by their second baseman, Weinbright. And here's Logan Kinney up. He's 0 for 1. Flew out to center in the second inning. Take another fly out right here. That would be a sacrifice fly. This is right popped up right behind us. Oh, that's right at my car. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Just kidding. Park next to Papa Scott there in the back row. <laughs> I know where the rendezvous point is. Uh huh. Infield in. 0 oh, 1 and holds on it. Calls for the strike, too. And 66 mile an hour curve. Good change of speeds by Holtz. So Logan got to choke up and protect the plate here. His key is just to get the ball in play. Umpire grants time. And if I'm Coach A, I'm down there telling Daryl Jones, hey, man, make sure the guy catches it before you uh, take off. We can't have that happen again. I mean, we went from having runner on third base and one out to being done with the inning. One swing of the bat. This one goes past the catcher. That's going to bring home Jones. The pinch runner comes all the way around the bags with a third run score. The runner advances to third. That's Pazanka. So one and two to count to Kenny at the plate. Or excuse me, is that? Yep, one ball, two strikes. Yeah, that's uh, Kenny. I tell you what, um, Anderson has had a little tough time with the wild pitches tonight. I don't know whether, you know, the. It's their first game, too, so I don't know whether the guys are just amped up and they're just, you know, gripping the ball and kind of choking the ball versus just kind of 
uh, throwing it, letting loose like normal or what? But we'll take it. Check swing. That was a, definitely a check swing. Evens the count, two balls, two strikes with the runner on third, on top, three to zero here in the bottom of the fourth. Infield still in. That tells you what the Anderson coach is thinking as far as, you know, scoring runs this game. This one hit high. It seems like foul, out of play. And that's next to our ushers over by the gate. Been going just over an hour and 15. Oh! Called time at the last second and granted it to him. That pitcher was, I thought, midway through the through the stretch. Thirteen pitches thrown for this new pitcher for the Trojans. Yeah, while the infield is in, the outfield is playing straight away and at normal depth. This one outside. Full count, three balls, two strikes. And you'd think then, you know, plenty of room to drop one in the bucket with the depth of this stadium. And I think I'd settle for the medium depth high uh, fly ball as long as we can stay on the bag. Oh, oh, that's up and in. That's another Sportsman's Barbershop close shave. That's very good. All right. So runners on the corners now bringing up number 19. And Henry Shooter. Shooter. Yeah, he walked in his first varsity at bat. Now, this is, this is a huge uh, situation right here. There's so many different things that Coach A could do. You could do a double steal. You could send Kenny, who's got, you know, pretty decent speed. You could have Shooter put down a bunt. Infield is looks like they're playing about double play depth. Third baseman in, even, and there goes Kenny. Here we go. This is a double steal. He's safe because he doesn't get a yeah. tag down. So. That is nice job. So Kenny went in with the, the steal. He just left way early on purpose, and the whole, whole point of that play is to get the pitcher to throw and focus on the play out there at second while Pazanka would come in. Anderson didn't bite, so we get an extra – 90 feet right there. I'm telling you, who is this program from last year to this year already? No doubt. I mean, it's night and day different. No doubt. That brings the infield back in. Shooter's a big, strong kid, too. This there you go. Get down. Got, mm, got it boy. It just goes foul. 30 feet to the left, man. That would have been a great one. That could have brought home, too. He is a strong kid. Big, strong kid, uh, especially for being a sophomore. Got him swinging on strike two there. 0 oh and 2 the count at the plate. One out with runners on second and third. All right, I'd say the same thing to him. Choke up and just put the ball in play. Take a good approach. Ooh, just missing on that one. One ball, two strikes. Holtz out of the stretch, the pitch. Oh, that's a called strike. But I believe his first strike out of the night. Now batting for the Maroons, the left fielder, number seven, yep. Drew Anderson. Drew Anderson to the plate, and again, he had a couple snags already in defense, defense, and he got around the bags to score. He was the first runner. There you go. Get out, get out, get out. Doesn't have to come much off the mark. So that's going to be the third out as we go now to the top of the fifth. And, and we've got to score run across, four, though. Three so three to zero, zero our score three. here. And the home opener here at the, the ballpark at Burger. Papa Scott, Lulu, and the Willard of Oz here giving you the stuff. We'll take a quick commercial break and be right back with more Maroon Baseball. Real estate companies come and go in Central Texas, about as fast as the wildflowers in spring. But when you're looking for a house, you're looking for a place to put down roots, a place to call home for years to come, which means you need a realtor with roots in the community, like Tate Property. Tate Property is a family-owned real estate brokerage located in Terrytown. We grew up here, we live here, and we work here, representing buyers and sellers of Austin's finest luxury homes, investment properties, and farm and ranch retreats. 
This is our passion. Give Tate Property a call at 512-474-8283. That's 512-474-TATE. Or look up online at tateproperty.com and let us know how we can help you today. Tate Property, exceptional homes, exceptional service. Athletics. Make sure you go ahead and, and subscribe the channel if you're not already. Like the video. Tell all your friends about us. Tell a friend to tell a friend. Tell a friend to tell a friend. We are at a thousand subscribers. Remember last year oh. we were trying to get there. The drive to 1K. So now the pursuit for two. Yeah, we need a little bit over, and then the plan would be to uh, submit to YouTube now, to see if we can get any money back from them. And, you know, it might be a quarter here, a quarter there, but that's a quarter we didn't have earlier. Hey, my daughter might want horseback riding lessons one day. I got to pay for that. <laughs> so Jake Beck still on the mound here as we go to the top of the fifth. 61 pitches thrown. You got Haynes, their shortstop up. He struck out looking in the second. Takes that one for a called strike. Here comes the 0 1 pitch from Beck. Right back to him, and it goes, yeah. just gets by him. That's her first hit of the game. So, a runner on first for the Trojans, starting things off here in the top of the fifth. And so, your, 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 your feeling, your intuition is going to Pizzago to close the thing. Yeah, that'd be my guess. You had to take your two most experienced pitchers. Jake's not going to throw a complete game by any stretch of imagination today, so I would go to Cool Hand Luke next. Let's go ahead and roll a pair. There it is. There you go. There it is. This one popped foul behind us out of play. No balls, one strike. If you're Anderson, are you going to try to run? I mean, it, we're one big swing away from this being a really close game still. So Yeah. You're down it. three. I think they, they're going to play it a little different in high school than you would maybe in the majors. You're, you're not going to play for the long ball. You're going to try to create your runs. Keeping that runner honest over on first. You know, they only have nine outs. We only played seven in innings here. We're in the fifth. So we, they got nine outs to go. They need three runs. But they're probably going to. Keep that pressure going. And does go on a pick Sorry a good pitch. Go oh. Yeah. That's a 72 mile an hour curveball in the dirt. It's going to be hard to throw him out on that one. He pitched a, picked a great pitch to run on. Still an on target throw. But runner does get safe on second. One and one to count. No outs here at the top of the fifth. Trojans trailing by three. Base in at first, expecting a bunt. Swing and miss right there for strike two. Some good stuff right there by Beck. How fast did that come in? You know, I missed that one, sir. Came in at 97 miles an hour. Wow. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Here's the one, two. Got him swinging on that one. That was 85. A little hesitant on that swing right there from the Trojans. So the strikeout here. Now running out. For the Trojans, on number second. five, Ed Small. Back up to the top of the order for the third time now for the Trojans. Yeah, it's Ed Small up. He's 0 for 2. He smacked one out to left field last at bat, but a great defensive play. Yeah. Small calling time at the plate. Yeah. 
Check swing and a good job by Sarge. Oh, they yeah. Did he win? Yeah, he did. Woo. That was close. I mean, that's how devastating Jake's curve or slider, whatever you want to call it, really is. I mean, it, it has a lot of late break to it. 0-1 oh to count at the plate with one out. That was a good pitch coming right back inside for strike two. Shout out to Sudavin Cat, checking out, got us up and running and again, uh, stepping up our game with multiple cameras. Shout out to Lulu on the ones and twos, doing a great job producing the whole squad. This breaking ball goes down low. Good catch by Starge. One ball, two strikes. that runner on second and small calling another time just trying to disrupt the, the tempo one ball two strikes with one out 70 pitches thrown for Beck man he's given us a great out tonight yeah he has this one hit hard to Kenny he catches the one hopper he's gonna go to the force at first runner advancing to third so a great job right there from the junior second baseman. Fielded that screamer over one hop and got the force at first. Yeah, yeah it was. That was a good play by Logan. That ball was just scorched over there. Came up, hit the ground, gave him a big candy hop, which is good. But that was a great play for Logan being over there. That's big, so it's two outs now for Trevin Weinbright, their second baseman, who's over two. He got on on the air last time. First inning, he actually uh, grounded right back to Jake for an easy one to three. So that out takes away our double play opportunity like how they got us with the tag up situation. Uh, <laughs> true. <laughs> that would be a true statement there, Oz. I cannot believe that was the double play, but that's just me. Still, that's in the past. We're, we're in the bottom or the top of the city. <laughs> Top of the fifth. Top of the fifth. There we go. 0-1 oh at the plate. This one hit hard to short. That's Javier. Does a good job fielding that one and firing it over to base. Uh. But not able to come up with the snag. So one comes home for the Trojans. And he's going to be on second base. Yeah. That was a good throw by Javier. Uh, it's, I think it's a little off. Had to stretch for it. Yeah. That's gonna it's gonna be a throw in there on shortstop. And that's gonna bring out Coach A. And it looks like they are gonna go to the switch. Seventy three pitches thrown for Beck. That's a great job. Weinbright on second is still his, but he's thrown a great game for the first game of the season. That's uh, yeah. four and two thirds. So he's definitely in position for the win if the Maroons can keep a hold of this. Oh, oh he's staying out there. Out there. Oh, I love it. Hey. I love now, it. The vote of confidence 12, from Coach A, bringing all the guys in. And Look at you. I thought they already made the motion to the bullpen. I Look at Oz faking me out over here, man. It's, it's everybody's first game. It's everybody's <laughs> first game of the season, all right? <laughs> Excited to be back. I, it was such a fun year last year, despite the record that we had. I mean, it, just getting to know this community, it, it's been so much fun. Excited to be back here. The feeling's mutual. People love the Oz. Oh, tell that to my wife. Do it for the people. <laughs> Foul tip was snagged by Sarge. Owen won the count, two outs. One came across for the Trojans, so three to one our score here. Hey, his his speed is still up on his fastball. You just wonder 74 going into 75 pitches here if the fastball still has the movement. This one gonna get past Sarge. 
turning, looking at home plate, and he's going to stay at third. Yeah, that's a curve in the dirt. Sounds like a good country tune. Curve in the dirt. <laughs> one and one to count, two outs. Closing games is something that Austin High, you know, coming out from last year, that's something that just learn how to, you know, close out some of these games. That would show a huge step. This one up top for ball two, two balls, one strike. Top now, three balls, one strike. Yeah, I think his legs are getting tired, personally. Oh. Papa Scott is a man. I forgot. It's your legs go. Your legs go. Your legs I mean, go. his arms got to be fatigued right now. It's still February. 77 pitches. 77 degrees, it feels like. It's an awesome day. Swings on that one and misses. So three balls, two strikes. 85 mile an hour fastball. Coach A came out with the mound visit, left him in. Let's see if he can get out of the inning here with this next pitch. Full count. You know what they call this pitch, Oz? The payoff. Oh, pitch. you learned last year, baby. I love it. That was your test, and you passed. Here that pitch comes. And got him on strike three. Jake back with the strikeout. That is huge. Holy Toledo. Great stop! Wow, Jake right Beck. From, from Beck, as he gets out of the inning, strands one Trojan on the bags on third. So that's now five stranded on the bags tonight for the Trojans. And the Maroons are nursing a 3-1 to one lead as we go into another commercial break. This is Austin High Baseball on the Vibe Live Network and the YouTube channel. Give it a like, subscribe, unsubscribe, resubscribe. Cheer on your Austin High School baseball team and enjoy the spring season with ease thanks to Terrytown Pharmacy. We're not just a pharmacy, we are a neighborhood health hub offering prescription services, immunizations, home delivery, and a charming selection of gifts for any occasion. Whether you're celebrating a win or supporting a player, find the perfect gift and keep your health in check at Terrytown Pharmacy. Let's celebrate health, wellness, and community spirit together. Baseball on Vibe Live Network. Nate to great Goulding there. We got a crazy bird and the uh, Cotton Eye Joe going on. It's the vibes at the ballpark, I'm telling you. The nachos are great. Question for you. Answer. Have you ever actually done the Cotton Eye Joe? Oh, come on now. Oh, you know it. Okay. Don't make me do it up here. Hey, last time I did it, did it was probably 1982. SPJST Hall in some Man. small town. Yeah. You never know what happens on the road whenever we go to Sin. <laughs> <laughs> we might have us two uh, broadcast partners tearing it up. Ooh, boy. <laughs> you, have, you may have to learn me again there. It's been a little while since I've done that one. Yeah, we got a lot of baseball to play in the next three games. Yep. Which just means that I get to spend more time with you, baby. Well, and it's spending more time with this team than I'm telling you. Uh, we had so much fun covering a team that didn't, <laughs> didn't necessarily translate to the wins and losses column, but again, so much experience gained yeah. by all this, all, all these youngsters and I mean, still a young roster at that. Yeah. yeah. It's going to be a, I'm telling you, Austin High is a team that they're a matchup nightmare. Yeah. You know, last year's team and this year's team, too, was easy to root for because they're good people. The good kids. When they were young, they, well, what did they know? You know what yeah. I mean? It's, you know, Logan Kenny last year was 15 when he was playing the varsity. That's crazy. You know, and he's playing against some kids, uh, you know, that were 18 going on 19. So, you know, there's three and a half year difference. 
McKinney had so many great outings on the on the mound. Mm -hmm. Doing a great job defensively at second though tonight. As number 11 to the plate for Ty Schreiber. Yeah, he's Schreiber. our center fielder. He got around he's got some score. speed. Yeah, he's got some speed. I'd love to see him put one down for a bunt right here. Inside call strike one. One ball, one strike. I don't know how comfortable he is, but boy, I'd pull that ball right down the first baseline. That first baseman's playing way back, and with his speed, that'd be an easy base hit. Called strike there. Just got the outside corner, one and two. This is a new pitcher. It Dakota. is a new pitcher. Woo. Now I'm swinging on that one right there. Took his eye off. That'll bring up now number two. Back to the top of the order for the third time. It's Javier. Now batting to the room. Shortstop. Number two, Javier Medinas. Let me see if I can get uh, who this pitcher this actually is. There's only a few Chick-fil-A sandwiches left in the concession stand. You'll get them while they're hot. Oh, he's the guy that got things started for them offensively. Derek Paez is the, is the relieving pitcher. Nasty break on that ball. It goes outside the strike zone, but that's a lot of movement there. Two balls, no strikes at the plate. Yes, pa Paez came in from left field. By the way, Joe's still playing. This one popped foul behind us, out of play. Not sure who gave Anderson the great idea to wear dark blue tops outlined in gold, but the numbers are also dark blue. It's either that or it's black or blue, but that is the hardest thing to pick up, especially when. You age a little. My 30-year-old eyes are starting to fail me. 15 look like, or 16 look like 15 to me. Two and two to count at the plate. Swings on that one. Two straight strikeouts here for Paez. As that brings up number three, starting catcher. Now to the room, a catcher. Good old Sarge. Three, James hey, Matt, get us a ch uh, chance of who's, uh, if you get a chance, Matt Green, uh, take a look at who's in the bullpen. Let us know. Uh, Lucas. Luke Pazanka. Oh. Okay. Just kind of like we thought. 71 mile an hour curve. Good movement on that one in for strike one. Sarge 0 for 2. Ah, over anxious there. Settle in, settle in. No balls, two strikes. Yeah, scoreboard's wrong up there, by the way. That's a good eye. Tried to get him to chase on that same pitch there. Yeah. Now it's one ball, two strikes. as we go down to the
Um, for the with the mental aspect of our players, right? You always hear you know, coaches tell players, you know, leave the last play behind you. So it'll be interesting watching Sarge right here, making sure that he put that last uh, at bat behind him, which I know he's very frustrated with himself on. Passes last, can't do anything about it. So let's see how he reacts here. Uh, moving in here, the top of the six. Go ahead. Water always finds its level. <laughs> Water does always find its level. That's just science. This one low inside. Ball one. Eightieth pitch right there for Jake the laser. Wind starting to pick up a little bit. This one hit hard in the gap. That's going to be number. Ooh, that's our center fielder. Yeah, Ty Schreiber. Schreiber! Ty Schreiber there to come up and field it and get it back in for a single. Now running for the Trojans, number 11, Gus Beggar. 3-1 our score here in the top of the sixth, so. Running for the Trojans, first base is number two, Ben Hatcher. Nope. Well. Going to start things off here, right in the regular season for Coach A's birthday. Runner goes, strike one, Sarge holding on that one. Good job at the plate. Yeah, again, they picked a great pitch to run on. A little curve low. Got Lulu already preparing me for the mid inning. I love this. We're getting it. Owen one swings on that strike. For strike two. Good stuff right there on pitch number 83. I'm just blown away about the difference this team looks compared to last year. <laughs> it feels different. Yeah. Oh, what a curve. Wow. That was by the hair of his chinny chin chin. Just missing inside, ball one. One ball, two strikes. Got him swinging on that one, dropped it, but he got the tag. Going to third to the Out. He got him. Oh! Oh, we called him safe? Uh. Just beat the tag. Wow. That was a good throw by Sarge and a good play at it by Pizzaka. With the tag, I thought he got that. That was close. Should have been a double play. But runner now advancing. The Batting third. for the Trojans, number ten, out. Ben Wasman. Tag up situation is in play. Go Ben. Go Ben. Go Ben. Down off. Right at our faces. No balls, one strike. Well, I tell you what, Jake is pitching his heart out out there. He really is. My gosh. The killer instinct he's got. Oh, and tagged him right there on that pitch. So now runners off the corners. That's the game time run on first. Yeah. Defense, defense, defense. Yeah, it looks like Coach A is going to make a change. I think. Ugh. They're gonna wait. Oh. Okay. I almost like going with the change here to change up the tempo, but at the same time, you want to roll a pair? Roll a pair would be great. Just what the doctor ordered. Pinch runner coming in for the Trojans on first. Did you get a number on that by chance? I want to say my 30-year-old eyes saw number seven. Now 
Now batting for the Trojans, number 16, Connor Como. Connor Como, pinch hitter. What a situation to come in. Runners on the corners with an out. Trailing three to one are the Trojans. Fouled off hard down the, behind us. You can feel the tension picking up here, man. It's yeah, this is great 26-6A baseball right here. Fakes the pickoff at first. And again, whipping that head back over to the runner on third. Fouled off again for strike two. Runner was had a huge lead off and going on on the swing from first, so he'll come back to first base. Runners on the corners. O2 at the plate, pitch number 89. This is number 90. Got him swinging on strike three right there. Great stuff going to chase on top. Two outs here. Still nursing the 3-1 lead with runners on the corners. Now batting for the Trojans, number 18, Colin Haynes. Colin Haynes to the plate for the Trojans. God, just love the, the belief in, in Beth. It's going so long so far. I mean, he has really thrown a great game. Runner goes. That's a strike. Sarge wisely holding on to that one. Holds the runner at third, so runners on second and third with two outs. Hold one at the plate. Does a good job of blocking that one, and umpire hits his cleat as well, so it stays right by him. No runners even make an attempt to go home. One to one to count. One more batter. Come on, back. You can do it. Man, this is really a gutsy performance so far. It is. Starting off a regular season like this, just setting the tone for the season. I never would have thought he'd be throwing this many pitches today. This just missing. That was close pitch there on the outside edge. Two balls, one strike at the plate. Wind's picking up, blowing pretty much straight in. Take a deep breath and channel the Patriot. Aim small, miss small. That one keeps him honest over by the, the helmet. Now in high inside for ball three. Three and one to count. Early in the regular season, but these games are the ones that matter when it comes down to the final few weeks of the season. Three and one pitch. That's good. Yes, sir. That's a good pitch right there. Full count. Pitch number 95, number 96 coming from Jake the Laser Beck. Starting to pick up here at the burger. That Austin High crowd's getting excited. Let's go, Jake. Payoff pitch. Yes, sir. Wow. Oh, and there's some talking going on, too. I think uh, I think the Anderson dugout was talking some noise to Jake, and he just answered that one. Well, what a what a gutsy performance right there from Jake and Matt. Let us know what's going on down there. How are the vibes? So apparently, uh, nothing apparently. <laughs> I mean, but down there, I mean, that was an electric way to come out of that inning. I mean, it seemed like that, that they got some momentum back on our side, so leaving those two runners stranded. 
Yeah, that was huge, man. I mean, yep. Jake just, uh, he just pitching his heart out out there, the gunslinger indeed. So now our 3-1 lead is going into the bottom of the sixth. We're only three outs away from ending this thing. But let's try to pile on. Let's get, get some, some runs. Offense. Yeah, let's get some runs. Let's make it more comfortable. So that's now, I believe, seven runners stranded on the bags by the Trojans. Boy, this has been a great 26-6A game. I mean, the pitching on both sides has been very good. Jake, obviously, is just throwing a heck of a game. Merrill, their starting pitcher, is he was crafty left-hander. Where, where can the team buy? Where, where can we buy merch? Merch? Uh, go to AustinMaroonsAthletics.com. AustinMaroonsAthletics.com. And you can buy some merchandise out there. You need to go do it because I'm telling you, this is going to be a fun team to come watch in person. And you need to be in your maroon. Loyal forever. Loyal forever. I wore this shirt around so much during the off season. And uh, it's my, probably my favorite shirt that I own. And uh, I can't tell you how many times I got stopped in public with just random people being like, oh, Austin High. I went to Austin High or I actually teach in Austin High. I've met a few teachers from over there. Leading it off by right? the room, this is the first baseman, number one, Jaden Besa. <laughs> Start things off here at the bottom of the six of the, the three, four, five spot. Jaden Besa to the plate. their third yep. pitcher of the night for the Trojans. He had three strikeouts in the last inning. Starting things off with a ball one, and then this one fouled off for one and one to count. Yeah, Jaden's 0 for 1. He walked last time up. That one's fouled off to the left-hand side. This one hit on the ground of the shortstop. He makes another nice play. And that shortstop, man, hasn't let too much by him today. That one first out here as that brings up third baseman, Luke Pizanka. Cool hand, Luke's one for two. Now for the Maroon, He's singled to left baseman, his last time up. Luke Pizanka. You don't know how good it feels to not have to look at the roster and know how to pronounce that last name. It feels so good. Mm -hmm. God bless the Maroon faithful last year dealing with me and the names. <laughs> Sorry, Cole Polakowski. I man. know. <laughs> Ian Polakowski, man, you struggled all year with that one. <laughs> that check swing, he says he's, he went on it, so strike one. Outside, one on one to count. He scores for around the game. Uh, Bowie is way out in front of Del Valley, six to nothing in the sixth. Buta, Johnson, and Lake Travis are tied at one in the top of the sixth. This one hit hard again, back to the shortstop. Fields it cleanly, makes the routine play over at first with the second out. Now back for the Maroons right fielder, number 13, Jack Unberhagen. Lumberjack Unberhagen to the plate. He's due. Sacrifice bunt last time up. 0 for 1 on the evening. All right. Lumberjack, this ball's been out past curfew. Time to give it a spanking. Mm, almost. Foul ball down left field line. That almost blooped right over the third baseman's head, but in the dimensions of this ballpark, the foul territories are in play a lot. <laughs> This one. That's a cue shot. That's in play. And a nice throw from the third baseman. And it looks like Lumberjack. Here's four after six. Olympic. The Trojans won. Maroons three. It looks like he limped when he ran through right there, but he's jogging back. Looking good now. So we're going to go ahead and take a quick commercial break as we go now to the top of the seven. Three outs away from an opening season, regular season win here. It's Papa Scott, Lulu, and the Wiggle of Oz. We'll be right back with more Maroon baseball here on the Bike Live Network. 
Real estate companies come and go in Central Texas, about as fast as the wildflowers in spring. But when you're looking for a house, you're looking for a place to put down roots, a place to call home for years to come, which means you need a realtor with roots in the community, like Tate Property. Tate Property is a family-owned real estate brokerage located in Terrytown. We grew up here, we live here, and we work here, representing buyers and sellers of Austin's finest luxury homes, investment properties, and farm and ranch retreats. This is our passion. Give Tate Property a call at 512-474-8283. That's 512-474-TATE. Or look up online at tateproperty.com and let us know how we can help you today. Tate Property, exceptional homes, exceptional service. And welcome back here to Maroon Baseball. Here as we go down the top of the seventh, pitching change for the Maroons. Jake Beck's night is over, 96 pitches thrown. And a great outing. Had some unbelievable defense played behind him as well. But Beck will get the final stats from Papa Sky as we get those calculated from the stat department. So that brings in the leading pitcher, Luke Zaka. Talk about a change of pace. It'll be good to have his tempo as he man, takes command on the bump. Had a great junior year last year and kind of a surprise for the Maroons as, you know, played himself into that ace role. Yeah, he has. He had a fantastic whip last year. Uh, off of memory, like 1.1 maybe, something like that. Um, so what, we've got a couple of defensive changes here. Logan Kenny moves to third base, and Charlie Reeves goes over to second base. The growth from last year to this year. How do you close games? Let's find a way to get this dub here. She's into 0 for 2 on the evening. Out off, strike one. Looks like some serious heat coming there. Two hours of gameplay for right now. Oh, got him on the breaking ball for a looking strike, too. Good eye for the Trojans there. One ball, two strikes. And I mean, as soon as the umpire points at Pazaka that he's got the, the room to play, I mean, he's already into the stretch. And this one's fouled off. One ball, two strikes. Pitch number five coming. This one just misses outside, even to count. Two balls, two strikes. Started out the south bat. Started off the sat bat, ahead in the count. No balls, two strikes. Now evened up, two and two. The wind up. Foul off again for the third time. Two and two, the count stays. on the 2-2 pitch. Got him on looking strike three. Nasty stuff right there. Leads things off with a looking strikeout. That's now back to the top of the order. Now Ed batting Small. for the Trojans, number five, Ed Small. Looking for a spark plug for the Trojans. This could be the guy that does it at the plate. Roots had two at the bottom of the third, one at the bottom of the fourth to get us our three. And that's a look at strike one. Yeah, strike one, a little curve there. He's 0 for 3 today. Yeah, 
that one in there for looking strike two. 75 mile. Yeah, sorry, uh, 74 mile an hour slider. It's 0 and 2. This one hit hard and it gets in between first and second. Lumber, Lumberjacks in the field bat thrown in. He got jammed on the inside uh, of the bat. That had to sting, but uh, he's strong enough to get it through the infield. Batting for the Trojans now is number six, Trevin Weinbright. Trevin Weinbright to the plate as Ed Small first with one out. Weinbright 0 for 3. This one just missing down low. Good job by Sarge blocking that one. This one is going to be dribbled and Pazaka coming up off the mound to get the force at first. One out away. Two outs here at the top of the seven. Three to one at Small on second in scoring position. Yeah, he may be in scoring position, but the one we're worried about right now is the hitter. Seth Crowley. There, there are two runs down, not one. So uh, Crowley is the important one here. You got to know the guys are talking to each other. Just focus on the hitter. Luke calls James out to to the mound, checking on signs as they go to the second level signs with Small and second, so he's not tipping the pitches. I believe we dropped both games to Anderson last year. Yeah, Crowley's 0 for 2, was hit by a pitch, struck out, and grounded to second. Good breaking ball there for strike one. 13 pitches thrown for Pizanka this inning. Had himself a strikeout and then the force out. Nice block by Sarge. One ball, one strike at the plate with two outs. This one hit into center field. Let's see if Schreiber can come up and make no, a play. Drop. That drop. That's going to bring home Ed's ball. That's all right. RBI single, but you're right. It's just that's only one. That was a good, good hit right there by the Trojans. Three to two, our score here with two outs. Cops coming down to the wire. Coach A gonna come out for a mound visit. Settle everybody down. Be interesting to see whether Anderson pitch runs for Crowley. And they do. Like number 20, 20 or 21. I would say that's 28, but boy, black on dark blue is really hard to read. I think their football uniforms are the same. Now, batting for the Trojans will be number 15, Derek. One Friday. of the two should be light. And now it's, I mean, in football, it's uh, by rule they have to be contrasting. We need to carry that over. Just like the black jersey, the purple number. That's so close. The game tying run is over on first. Two outs though. This one fouled off or strike one. the runner honest. That was a good throw over there. Yeah, it was. <laughs> Jaden playing first, too. That's just the lockdown first baseman that we've got. He's had himself a good game. On those pickoffs, it helps that he's a left-handed thrower because right-handed is glove, and it just is easier and faster to put the tag down on the base runner. Time called for the, for the batter at the plate. 
0-1 at the plate with two outs, runner on first. Kazaka, this one gonna get down and it's caught by Hopper. Maroons win. The Maroons win. Regular season and happy birthday to Coach A. Trojans two, the Maroons zero. So Jake Thanks Beck everybody gets for coming out. Be safe on your way home. Pazanka gets the save. And man, I mean, you talk about how the season ended last year to this first game this year. Wow, what a team that uh, you know definitely made the changes in the off season, learned from a lot of those you know close losses, and we found a way to close this one. Yeah, hundred percent, man. It's so important to get off to a good start. This, like we talked about earlier, is just as important as a game in March or April because it is a district game. And what a confidence builder it's got to be for this team. You think about it. I mean, when it comes down to the end of the season, you need these games early on uh, where teams are still feeling out their lineups, their pitching rotation. For Jake to go the distance he did and for Pazaka to come in and just throw some nasty stuff right there. Um, and great defense behind us as well. Overall, I think it was a great game. And it seemed like last year was always one, one part lacking that would cost us the game. I mean, whether it comes to smart base running. Um, to, to defense or offense, and it seemed like all phases of the game uh, were done tonight here with the dub. Yeah, and you, you can't say any more than uh, just what an impressive performance by Jake Beck tonight. Six innings, gave up two hits, no earned runs. He did give up one run, but it was unearned. Walked two and struck out ten. Struck out ten? Struck out ten in <laughs> six innings. Uh, Luke Pazanka came in, and like Cool Hand Luke he is, one inning pitch, picked up the save, one earned run, that's okay. It, it didn't harm us. He also struck out one. So the bet gets the win, Pazanka gets a save, and we've got, um, we got the loss going to Holtz for uh, Anderson. And Matt, I tell you, if you can uh, go ahead and get Coach A and, and uh, Jake back uh, as soon as uh, we're back from commercial break, we'll go ahead and uh, hopefully get those uh, post-game interviews. Regular season opening game dub for Coach A. We'll take a quick commercial break, and we'll be right back with that. Coach A and Jake Beck. And again, this is Maroon Baseball with the win, 3-2 here over the Anderson Trojans. We'll be right back. Sportsmansbarbershop.com, the Sportsman's Barbershop, an Austin institution. Do you need a haircut? A real haircut? One that's tapered or blocked, clipped or trimmed just the way you like it? Come let the licensed barbers at the Sportsman's Barbershop take care of you. The Sportsman's Barbershop is a friendly, no-frills neighborhood barbershop located in Austin's Brikerwood area. Our barbers specialize in traditional haircuts for men and boys, along with beard trims and straight razor shaves. The trophies and mounts donated by customers that line the barbershop walls serve as testaments to over 60 years of serving Austin. Give the guys a call, 512-459-9525 to schedule your appointment today or look us up online at sportsmansbarbershop.com. The Sportsman's Barbershop, an Austin institution. Cheer on your Austin High School baseball team and enjoy the spring season with ease thanks to Terrytown Pharmacy. We're not just a pharmacy, we are a neighborhood health hub offering prescription services, immunizations, home delivery, and a charming selection of gifts for any occasion. Whether you're celebrating a win or supporting a player, find the perfect gift and keep your health in check at Terrytown Pharmacy. Let's celebrate health, wellness, and community spirit together. Real estate companies come and go in Central Texas, about as fast as the wildflowers in spring. But when you're looking for a house, you're looking for a place to put down roots, a place to call home for years to come, which means you need a realtor with roots in the community, like Tate Property. Tate Property is a family-owned real estate brokerage located in Terrytown. We grew up here, we live here, and we work here, representing buyers and sellers of Austin's finest luxury homes, investment properties, and farm and ranch retreats. This is our passion. Give Tate Property a call at 512-474-8283. 
That's 512-474-TATE. Or look up online at TatePropertyCom and let us know how we can help you today. Tate Property, exceptional homes, exceptional service. All righty. So we'll go ahead and break down some other scores from 26-6A. Again, we got the dub here at the burger, the ballpark and burger. Easy for you to say. Yep, it looks like um, Lake Travis and Buda Johnson are in a tight one just like we are or were here. Lake Travis has taken a 3-1 to one lead in the bottom of the six. Ooh. So Buda Johnson has one more chance to get them and then Bowie and uh, Del Valley. You know, that game was, uh, last we checked, it was uh, 6 to nothing Bowie in uh, the top of the sixth inning. So... Um, for the Maroons, you know, we've talked a lot about the, uh, the pitching. On the hitting side, uh, we actually had one base hit, and that was Luke Pazanka's. Uh, but we did walk four times, and what was important is our base running. We so did a great fun. job there. Anderson helped us out with a lot of wild pitches yep. there, uh, but we executed. So that's the important thing there uh, for the team. And Man, what a what a great thing to do is get off to a, a win. We're one and zero. It's a happy birthday to Coach A. My gosh, it makes him 27 years old, and he's one and zero. I tease him a little bit. I call him Connie Mack. Uh, Connie Mack, for those of you who don't know, holds a major league record uh, for most wins in a season, and that's or not season in a career, because he managed the Philadelphia Athletics for 50 years. So what the what we're saying to Coach A is, hey man, at 20 when he actually got the job he could be around long enough to get the texas high school baseball record just by longevity which is a great thing so we're going to go down here to to matt green in just a second for a little post game interview hopefully we'll get uh, jake beck and uh coach a I mean, here just getting the daps up from the from the parents up here it feels so good to be back here in baseball season this was we got close last year with this team. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. Talk about getting the monkey off your back, man. That's a great one. That is a great one. And we're just giving Matt some time to, to go ahead and get uh, Jake and hopefully Coach A there. I know we're going to get rushed out here. so Yeah, there. yeah, we are. I've already talked to our guy here, and he's ready to get home, I know. But, but it's all about the kids. It's not Absolutely. about us. So. Um. Matt, how we doing? We have Coach A there, and we got the microphone all set. Yep, we've got Coach A uh, back, uh, back, and uh, we're good. Just need a second. Get a second to set up over okay. there. Okay, yep. Yeah, so, look, it's a tough district. This is a, a, you know, it's a different year. I think we're going to be my own um, – view is we're going to be in the hunt for a playoff spot today 100%. it's going to come down a lot you know we have to replace jackson linroth uh behind the plate we have two capable guys osby Contreras, the sophomore catcher james scott uh he's a junior he caught he, a great game yeah he, he made some good pitches and judy kenny actually mentioned and she's right that him backing up that uh throw that got behind i forgot who made it on our side but got behind uh, third base, Sarge was down there to get it. That backup and that effort is what actually probably saved that third run from coming right. in. So that's a, actually a good point by uh, Mrs. Kenny. So Looks like we're down ready with, with Jake. All right, very good. All right, Matt, over to you. All right, heck of the day tonight. Um, a lot of perseverance. How you feeling? Uh, I feel great. I'm going to use first for the team. Uh, man, Talking to the mic. Yeah, awesome, yeah. Dan. Good job. All right, coaches on the front right now. Yep. Hey, uh, Matt, make sure you get your mic uh, up closer to the uh, to the the folks. So when the coach A is ready, make sure you get it on up there. If you have a uh, AirPod, just kind of hold it up to them like a microphone would be. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Coach A must be getting a call from Mama or something like that. 
Hey, if you really want to, Matt, uh, for your initiation into the Vibe crew, you could sing him Happy Birthday right there here, a cappella. There we go. <laughs> yeah. That, that would uh, be great. Maybe not. All right. Uh, uh, Coach, hold your phone up so he can talk it to That's the That's awesome. Uh, heard it's your birthday today. Yeah. Maybe, maybe nice. No, no. Just be gone. Oh, are we live? Oh, yeah. Are we live? You got to take your AirPod up. Yeah, move the microphone. Uh, hold on, let me, move let me the fix this, I guess. To Coach a. So what? Move your microphone closer to Coach A. I think you're, it's picking up your AirPod. Thank you, Gabby. Perfect. Okay, let me fix that real quick. Just hold your uh, phone to Coach A. Like disconnect your AirPod. Hold my phone to Yeah, disconnect okay, your okay. AirPod. There we go. Yeah. All right, I'll do that real quick. Right. Hello? Hey, hey. Hey, happy How birthday, buddy. <laughs> Thank you. Happy. Hey, was that your mom you on guys. the phone? What, what was going on there? You, you're, you're, you're dissing no, us for a little are, bit. Those are my best friends watching. Uh, mom, I'm about to call you. Hold on. But I call my friends first because, um, yeah, I, I played baseball growing up with them at Mallwood. Shout out Mallwood, 16A school down in El Paso. Um, but I wanted to call them first to to let them know that we won. So. Yeah, there you go. There you go. What kind of questions you have for Coach A there, Matt? Um, how do you think you guys are going to do this season? Uh, I think we're going to compete just like we just like just like we did. Um, people again, and I'll keep saying it. People keep asking me like, "How do you think you're going to do? How do you think you're going to do?" I don't know because this is my first complete year with them, and I just told them I'm proud of them. This was a selfless win. Everybody did their job, um, but it takes it takes nine dudes to, to go win. It doesn't take one guy. Um, Man, I, I gotta say, if I'm gonna say one guy, it's gonna be Jake Beck. Well, well, coach, I mean, into that, I mean, what did you tell Jake when you went out there the mound visit? He's approaching 80 pitches. You could have pulled him. Yeah. You, you gave him the vote of confidence. I mean, what did you tell him? I I told him that. One, he's got this, obviously. But two, I, I got to give these guys their respect. Um, I would hate to pull it, pull him out, and, and take that fire away from him. But um, Jake Beck's, Jake Beck's a dude who, and he's looking at me right now. But he was the dude. I mean, <laughs> he's he a had... dude who. He's a dog. He's just a dog. Absolutely. Plain and simple. He's a dog. Hey, he struck out ten in six innings, only walked two. What a performance by Jake. You know, I. And I'll be honest, Beck, because he's listening to me right now. I was worried with base runners and Jake Beck. And I told him, look, they haven't stole. They're probably not going to steal. Just do your thing. Let your defense work. And that's what he did. Um, I could tell he was very nervous when he first had base runners. And for that reason is during scrimmages, he's just paying dudes. He's letting his defense work. So he never really worked with base runners, if that makes any sense, up until now. But, um, no, he, he buckled down and he did his job. Fantastic. Well, Coach A, congratulations again on the win. Happy birthday again. We celebrated Thank yours you. last year, so that's two years in a row now with you. So that's <laughs> that's great. Let's make it many more. Thank you, sir. Well, let's appreciate make it many more. I appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Yes, sir. All righty. Well, that's going to wrap it up. We're going to go ahead and end the broadcast so we can get on out of here. It's a school night. Uh, but, again, thank you so much for Maroon Faithful listening, loyal forever. Um, but we get the dub here to start things off. We get the dub. Thanks, Lulu Corn, Shep. Alden, Matt Green, the whole uh, crew here from Austin High, thank you all very much for your, your time. Thank you for your help, and you guys.